Ives forever. For 75 years, the people of Southeast Michigan have come here to Michigan Stadium for a respite from the grim realities of the real world. The players are back too, focused on a game, unified as is this nation, not just for maize and blue, but on this weekend, red, white, and blue. It is in this spirit we present Big Ten football. But before we do, we welcome in our colleague, Mike Gleason. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Phillips 66 Sports Center in-game studios. It's certainly great to have you with us again for another season of Big Ten football. College football doesn't seem as important as it once did, but it's a game that's been such a big part of so many American lives. College football offers a sense of community, and hopefully today, college football can at least help start some form of healing process. The players are ready to get back on the football field, but even as they resume their schedules, they do it while still riding that emotional roller coaster. In the back of our heads is always going to be that uh, one thing that we're thinking about, and that's what happened in New York, you know? It's uh, pretty much touching us all in our hearts. All, this, all the things that happened last week, kind of take a step back and look at your situation and put things in perspective. And I think we did that, and I think now you can enjoy, I think we enjoy football more now that we have the opportunity to play it. It's been hard. You know, I can't tell you it's been easy. It's been hard to, to concentrate, you know, we don't, we don't put football at the head of our lives. You know, we got to live life first. Life is way more important than football. Everybody has to go back and focus in on what, what they were doing previously, you know, because cause our lives go on. And it, even, though, even though there's a lot bigger things than what we're doing, a lot bigger things than athletics, we just, we, we just have to move on. Well spoken, Mr. Lloyd. And when they do take the field again today, Wisconsin and Penn State Open Big Ten players, Joe Paterno once again gets a shot at tying Bear Bryant's all-time 1A record for wins. Michigan State goes for their fifth straight win over Notre Dame, their third straight in South Bend. Jim Tressel takes his Buckeyes on the road for the first time, heading for the Rose Bowl to meet 12th-ranked UCLA. Illinois goes for their third straight 3-0 start when they host unbeaten Louisville. Purdue's at home hosting Akron. Indiana entertains Utah while Northwestern moves into ACC country to take on Duke. Michigan Stadium, just one place where America comes together for college football this afternoon. We'll get you back out to Ann Arbor for today's national anthem right after this. That's going to do it for us in the Phillips 66 Sports Center in-game studios. We'll see you back here at halftime with all the scores and highlights from games across America. Right now, let's send you back to Michigan Stadium for today's national anthem. Here's Wayne Larrabee. Wayne. Well, thank you, Mike. We expect better than 110,000 perhaps on hand here today at Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor. And as you can see, it is a sun-splashed Saturday afternoon. The Wolverines about to enter the playing field, and there they are. arrived early here at the stadium they had to go through a little bit more than the usual ticket taking but the players are gl glad to be back in the arena and the fans appear to be as well hi everybody I'm Wayne Larrabee I'll be joined by Randy Wright and Jim Barber a little bit later on and we'll document the game for you here today but in the wake of the events of September 11th, there is no question we've seen America at its best in time of crisis. But you know, America has always embraced its leisure time. And there is no greater example of that than a sunny Saturday afternoon in Ann Arbor when the Michigan Wolverines are on the field. The tailgating was a bit subdued earlier today, but the fans made their way into the stadium a little bit earlier. Western Michigan, the opponent here this afternoon of the Broncos, are glad to be in town for this ball game certainly a patriotic theme here today and in a few moments uh, we'll take part in a uh, service prior to the kickoff of this afternoon's game there'll be a moment of silence the two teams are on the field for the playing of our national anthem and we'll all stand by and watch and look in uh, here today as I mentioned the stadium filled up a little bit early fans made their way in went through the uh, the usual security a little bit more than that perhaps today but they're in place and ready for uh, this ceremony that's about to take place Lloyd Carr in his seventh season here at Michigan his counterpart on the other sideline Gary Darnell both coaches I think in the end glad and relieved that these this game was not played last week but that they were able to reschedule for this week.
a USA theme. Yeah, there's some maize and blue here, but there's a lot of red, white, and blue as well. And the flags flying at half staff. No one is forgetting the tragedy of September 11th, but this perhaps a break for three hours on a beautiful, beautiful afternoon, a sunny afternoon here at Michigan Stadium. We pause now for a moment of silence here at Michigan Stadium for those who lost their lives on September 11th. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, the University of Michigan Athletic Department requests that everyone in Michigan Stadium please stand for a moment of silence. Please take this time to remember and honor the victims of last week's tragedies and to reflect on the values and freedoms that are the foundation of our great country. Thank you. And now as our flag is raised and brought to half staff by the Tri-Service ROTC Color Guard, we invite you to stand and join in singing as Professor Michael Haithcock, Director of Bands at the University of Michigan, leads us all in our national anthem. This afternoon from Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor, the Western Michigan Broncos pay a visit to the Michigan Wolverines. Big Ten football on ESPN Plus is presented by Advance Auto Parts. Red, white, and blue throughout the stadium here on a beautiful September Saturday afternoon. Hi, everybody. I'm Wayne Larrabee along with Randy Wright. We'll be joined by Jim Barber down to the sidelines. Well, it seems like it's been so long ago since these kids played a football game. All that's happened in the world around them. What's their mindset? Well, there's a lot of emotion going through these kids. As you said, it seems like forever since they've played. And now that they know that it's okay to play. Last week, there were a lot of questions. This week, it is okay to play. That's what the people want, and that's what they want. So there's a lot of excitement going through there, and they want to get on the field and get to doing what they do, and, and that is play ball. And Michigan will kick to Western Michigan to start the proceedings here this afternoon. Dropping back deep, that's Ronald Rogers to receive this kick as we get set for football. Phillip. Brabs will do the kicking off for Michigan here today. Lloyd Carr teams in the loss at Washington two weeks ago. Rogers out across the 25 yard line earlier today. Jim Barber talked with Lloyd Carr. When tragedy struck the United States 11 days ago, Lloyd Carr sat down with his football team and became a listener, he said. And, Coach, what did you learn about your group in relation to what's happening in this country? Well, Jim, as a football coach, you do a lot more talking than you do listening. And I wanted to find out exactly uh, 
where our team was, what their thoughts and feelings and emotions were. And uh, I expected maybe a 20, 25 minute meeting. It ended up being an hour and 20 minutes. And during that time, uh, I gained tremendous respect for uh, the young people that we have at Michigan. I'm sure uh, they're the same uh, type of people that, uh, that we have across this country. They're very uh, concerned, very sad. Uh, they're, 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 uh, emotions ran the gamut and uh, expressed, I think, what we feel as a country. Thank you, Coach. We appreciate your time. Thank you, Jim. Thank you very much, Jim. Jeff Welsh just completed his first pass, gain of about nine yards to Darnell Jennings, and it's second down for Western Michigan. They'll use a three receiver set most of the day. Wolverines almost jumped off sides of that play. And meanwhile, they're very close to the first down. Let's take a look at the Western Michigan backs and receivers. Advance Auto Parts starting lineups. Philip Reed getting the start at running back. Jennings is a tall receiver. Wolverton as well. Bush is the go to guy. And Aferio Gun is the uh, receiver most decorated in this core. Hinson and Stover are the strength of the offensive line. Once again, the three receivers set out a first down for Western Michigan. That's Bush in motion. Pass got just past the receiver, so it is a legal pass, but Victor Hobson was in on the quarterback almost before he completed his drop. Boy, he, it was. It's supposed to be a bootleg. He comes out, and here you, you take a look at this defense, and they're going to be coming after Welsh all day. Rubashek, Hoyer, Lazarus has moved into the starting lineup. Shante Orr is an athlete to watch. There's Hobson who just made the play. Foot and Brackens. Brackens in his first game of the season. He's been on the injured list the past two weeks. Jeremy Lasour has moved into the starting lineup along with Todd Howard in the corners of that defense. Good safeties as well. On second down. Philip Reed to the 40 yard line and we may get a violation of the neutral zone by the Michigan Wolverines Hobson made the stop on the play well Wayne that's going to be one of those what did the official see first Michigan jump but also a wide out for Western Michigan did and there you saw the hand signal looks like it's going to go against the the home team there is Lloyd Carr Michigan has never lost to a team that uh, now constitutes the Mid-American Conference. They're 14 and 0, but all 14 of those games have been played here. Well, that, that that's a big advantage, but I don't really know if it would have mattered where they would have been played. <laughs> so second down coming up once again for Western Michigan. You'll see a lot of single back offense behind uh, Jeff Welsh. Quick inside handoff, and Philip Reed's got a couple of yards out close to the 44-yard line. Dan Romashek made the stop. Gary Darnell has done an outstanding job. He is the MAC Coach of the Year a season ago at Western Michigan. Key third down coming up here for Western Michigan. They spread things out. They try and take advantage of what the defense gives them. Don't force anything. A lot of pressure on their quarterback to execute. They'd like to do better than that on third down. Micah Zool in these situations is one of their go to receivers. Good possession receiver. He got inside position on Julius Curry to make the reception for a first down. Well, Zool making only his fourth reception of the season. And that's one of the things that you have to face when you face this offense is they have so many different guys that are capable of catching the ball. They, they interchange them a lot of substitutions. You really don't know who maybe Western is thinking their go-to guy is well they like to do different things with the same combination of players on the field and and they'll throw a lot of different uh, shifts and looks at a defense and right now they're in a four receiver set play action Welsh with plenty of time a ferry Ogin on a diving grab inside the Michigan 30 yard line make that Jennings on the reception Boy, Jennings was open, Wayne. Early, he was wide open. See if we can see him coming right into the bottom of the screen. Look how open he is right there. Michigan reacts. A little better throw hits him in stride, and that could have turned into a much bigger play. But here you see as Welsh gets his head up, then picks him up, does a nice job at least of finding him, though it be late. Turns into what is excellent now field position for Western. Jennings, one of the possession receivers, good size. He's 6'3 and 200 pounds. 
Welsh under pressure. Larry Foot and Cato June meet at the quarterback. Lost back outside the 35-yard line. Boy, L Larry Foot is a welcome return to this defense. He's been hurt. Came back last week against Washington two weeks ago. Played an outstanding game. He's a leader in that middle of their defense there. I think he tied his school record six sacks, six tackles for loss. Six tackles for loss. Against lost. Washington, and he had another one there at a key time, right when Western Michigan was starting to get a little thing going on offense. Second and 17. Barry Ogan was in motion. Welsh, good protection. Jennings makes the catch close to the 20-yard line. Todd Howard had the coverage. Boy, that's one thing these Broncos will do. They will keep coming after you. Michigan gets a big play on defense. They go right back, a little play action pass, which worked for them earlier in this drive. Welsh gets good protection, then throws a strike right to Jennings. Take a look at this now. Good protection. Watch him stand up, stand up. Throws a strike right where it needs to be, and Jennings does a nice job of catching that under duress. This is the opening drive of the ball game, Western Michigan. With a third down at about two. Blitz coming. Welsh nowhere to go. Back outside the 25 yard line. A loss of about seven yards. Second sack of the series for the Michigan defense. Boy, you, you talked about the blitz coming, Wayne, but watch how the pocket collapses. The blitz coming from the left side of your screen, but watch the whole pocket just collapses. And there are several blue jerseys back there. Welch, in seeing that first guy come through, maybe you got to get rid of that ball and at least save your field position. First field goal attempt coming up for Robert Menchinger. Mishandled snap cost him an opportunity at Virginia Tech two weeks ago. 44-yarder, and this one not going to get there. So the Michigan defense gives, but not everything. They stall the Broncos. We're scoreless with 10.32 to go in the first. Wayne Larrabee, Randy Wright, Jim Barber, welcome back to Michigan. No score. The Wolverine defense uh, saw Western take a 10-play, 47-yard drive and backed him up on a sack and a missed field goal. And now the Wolverine offense on the field for the first time. John Navarre has proved to be an accurate passer and a cool customer. Chris Perry. Across the 30 to the 33 yard line. Advance Auto Parts starting lineups in for the Wolverines. Perry and Askew, two fine runners. Askew is a threat to run the football to the fullback spot. Walker, the star in the receiving core. They need help for him on the flank. The offensive line, Jonathan Goodwin is the leader along with Kurt Anderson. They have the experience. Petrozello is a former defensive lineman. That always helps. <laughs> helps use your hands, you mean? Yes. On second down, Perry. Got the first down out to the 39 yard line. For the Western Michigan Broncos defensively, Browning and Allsbury are the strength of the defensive line. The linebackers are new and somewhat inexperienced. Malloy and Lake will see a lot of people play on the front. Rogers and Ballard on the corners. Lewis, Brown, and Forrest are safeties, and they their base defense is what most teams would call a nickel. First down for the Wolverines. Perry again. Defensive coordinator Jim Knowles of Western Michigan mentioned that he felt that the Wolverines would try to attack right at Western Michigan up front because they're undersized at the tackles and inexperienced in the linebacking core. And that's a bad combination to have. You mentioned how good the defensive ends are, Chris Browning and Anthony Alsbury, but inside, as you said, the two defensive tackles and the two linebackers, those are where the questions come up. Second down for Michigan. Perry going wide this time. Browning got out in front of the play with help from Lape. Jim Barber is on the sidelines with us. Uh, Jimmy, what can you tell us about the security precautions that have been taken? Wayne, you mentioned earlier, much tighter than usual here at Michigan Stadium. German Shepherds all over the field before today's game to make sure that nothing was amiss. And also everybody getting checked a little bit more than usual. In fact, that allowed for a late arriving crowd here at Michigan Stadium. That's rather unusual. But this type of security will be in effect, the checking of handbags and such for quite a period of time. I should also mention no fly zone today no airplanes above the stadium by way of restrictions from the FAA guys third down Navarre 
Calvin Bell for a first down in Bronco territory the 46 yard line. Joe Ballard responded from the secondary along with Jermaine Forrest and the Wolverines move the chains. Joe Ballard and Ron Rogers the two corners very experienced. This is where Navarre though is at his best when he can drop back straight in the pocket gets pressure he's got an incredibly strong arm and he's gaining confidence and poise with every snap he takes and every game he plays Lloyd Carr very impressed with the way he grew up against Washington wants that to continue today he struggled in the first half it came on late in the second quarter in Washington this is Askew for the first time today and a beautiful tackle made by Jojo Mesa a junior college transfer from Mount San Antonio and he has really moved up the charts on the depth chart for Western Michigan. B.J. ask you a dangerous back whether from the fullback or tailback position in this shoestring tackle right here by Mesa saves what could have been a pretty big play. Ask you started one game at tailback one game at fullback Lloyd Carr though starts Perry this week along with ask you wanting to get his best 11 offensive players on the field. It is second down. Marquise Walker's first catch of the day nets a first down to the 36 of the Broncos. A little out pattern. Joe Ballard and Jermaine Lewis respond from the secondary. Marquise Walker, big game last uh, two weeks ago against Washington, 15 catches. But Michigan needs somebody else to stand up and develop. There you saw the hit right as Walker comes down with that ball. Michigan, though, looking for another receiver to emerge to complement Walker. Walker last week, 15 passes. School record, 15 receptions. Navarre, there's that deep out. Oh, nice break on the ball by Ronald Rogers. Boy, it was. He was looking into the backfield, read the pattern early, got an excellent jump, but you still take a look at the, the arm strength Navarre has from the yeah. far hash mark getting that ball out there. He gets it out there in a hurry, doesn't he? He, he, he does. He gets a, he, he's got a pretty big league fastball. He does. He's still learning. He's just he's in only, his... Only a sophomore. In fact, first time ever, Michigan does not have a quarterback on its roster with junior senior eligibility. Everybody is younger than that. I thought you'd notice that. The officials noticed something here as well and threw a flag on it. Far for the snap, false start, offense. When you start looking for some signs of, of players and the emotion and the excitement and getting back into it, these are some of the mental mistakes that happen early as you start to get into that rhythm that you, you want to have from the very beginning. Players will start to settle down once they get a couple of hits. Michigan backed up, second and 15. Coach Carr. Been an emotional week for him as well. As Jim Barber documented with the coach earlier today. Four receivers set, Navarre deep drop, they screen it. BJ asked you. Touchdown. One yards. Ronald Bellamy delivered a rushing block that helped spring that play. Bellamy, a wide receiver. Sometimes, Wayne, when you get the ball in a back's hands, he's used to running with it. Watch how Askew, a receiver to begin with. Right now, though, he becomes a runner. And watch him set up his blocks. Little move, little patience to let the blocks develop. Picks up a little block down there. Nice play. Epstein adds the extra point. The crowd back into it in a hurry. Michigan on the board first here this afternoon. Today's Big Ten game is brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. Discover Card for the slightly smarter consumer. Miller Lite. It's Miller time. Sitco. At Sitco, we enjoy football as much as you do. Sitco, we know you. Cooper Tires, a lot of mileage for the money. Cooper Tires, drive on. And by Sanard, now with two distinctively different car lines, the L Series and the S Series. Ronald Rogers back deep for the second time today to receive the kickoff from Philip Brabs.
And this one over the head of the return man into the end zone. What's always been impressive about Lloyd Carr, Michigan wide receivers, is their ability to block. Well, you, you can't have success getting the ball to the outside if you don't have wide receivers to block. Watch how Bellamy gets in front of Ballard. He doesn't try and push him from the back, which would have brought the penalty on. He stays in front of him. Then when, Be when Ballard moves, Bellamy continues to get in front of him, sustains his block. Big key to ask you's touchdown. Nine plays, 73 yards for the Wolverines on the scoring drive. First down, Western Michigan. Empty backfield behind Welsh. A little look in over the middle. Reception made by Kendrick Mosley. And the linebackers, Brackens and Foot, respond. A gain of about seven. Jeff Welsh coming off a less than stellar performance against Virginia Tech had a very good first game against Illinois State struggled last week and he is a quarterback like most offenses but particularly this one he has got to have an outstanding game for the Broncos to have success four receivers set for Western read the long setback Western likes to run out of the four receivers set to spread the defense and then find a crease inside. When you take a look at the pressure that Welsh has been under, when you spread your offense out and you've got no backs in to help block, you've got to expect to be able to take these hits. And we're early here in the game, and he's already been sacked a couple of times and taken some hits when he's gotten rid of the ball. Randy, when you're in that kind of a set, generally does the quarterback have a man he's got to watch out for on a, on a blitz or rush? Looks like he's got two or three he's got to look out for here, but yes, there's usually at least one he's got to watch. Third down coming up for Western Michigan, but Welsh gets a timeout and will return with the Wolverines leading 7-0. Wayne Larrabee, Randy Wright, Jim Barber back at Michigan Stadium. Patriotic afternoon. College football returns on the national stage. Western Michigan trailing 7 0. Empties the backfield. Two tight ends set. Third down. Welsh looks over the middle. A Ferry Ogin makes the catch for a first down to the Phillips 66 Sports Center in game studio. Mike Gleason. Wayne, Wisconsin, Penn State, Badgers on the board first. Nine plays, 61 yards, capped off by Brooks Bollinger. Get Mark and Ellie, three yards. Badgers up 6 nothing after they miss the extra point. Wayne? And Mike, as you mentioned earlier, Joe Paterno trying for his 200, 323rd win to equal Bear Bryant. First down, football to the 38-yard line for Western Michigan. Welsh drops it. Falls on it back inside the 25. Lazarus made sure he covered it. One well, mistake you just can't have at this time. A fake handoff right here. Quarterback's got to keep his hand on that ball. Now nope. Reed brought his elbow <laughs> down to, to try and really emphasize the fake. But as a quarterback, you know you're keeping that ball to yourself. You, you got to have your passing grip on it anyway. Your responsibility to make sure you've got a secure hold of it. Turnovers and penalties killed Gary Darnell's team at West Virginia a couple of weeks ago. They had 10 penalties in that game and I believe three turnovers. The fake to Reed didn't fool Larry Foote. We mentioned him earlier. Larry Foote is much quicker than he was a year ago. He spent time in the offseason working with the Michigan women's track coach James Henry to improve his speed and quickness and boy he's been in the backfield all day well nice job by foot blitzing under control not just coming full out at the quarterback the play was taking place right in front of him he kept his eyes open reacted to it instead of just going for the quarterback kept things in front of him and made the tackle so nice play by foot right from the get go third and to understate it long Welsh it is fourth down for Western Michigan. Cato June the coverage on Marco Wolverton. Jeff Welsh has absorbed quite a pounding already and we still have over three minutes to go in the first quarter. Well Michigan knows that Western Michigan is going to spread things out. They're not going to have the extra blockers in there. They feel that they have a strength advantage up front and they just push that pocket back. They're going to put a pretty good beating on Welsh and 
as you said, Wayne, so far here in this first quarter, they've done an effective job of that. The punt from Anderson. Julius Curry shakes the first and the second. Now the third and finally brought down by the fourth tackler. Inside Western Territory at the Bronco 41. Let's take a moment to thank our Big Ten corporate partners. Scudder Investments, translating opportunities. Cooper Tires, a lot of mileage for the money. Cooper Tires, drive on. And 7-Up, make 7-Up yours. Michigan already leading 7-0. Much to the delight of those fellows on the drums. Starting this drive at the 41-yard line of Western Michigan. And they reverse it to Calvin Bell. Made a good move in the backfield, but barely got back to the line of scrimmage. Man who got there first, Jermaine Lewis. A nice job by Jermaine Lewis coming up from his safety position and staying in the backfield. Wasn't fooled at all by this. There you see Bell right there, comes right into Lewis. And even though Lewis is semi juked out there in the backfield, when you have a reverse, when you stay at home, even though you don't make the tackle, you're responsible for the play. Well, exactly. And the loss of one on the play now, Michigan, second and 11. Navarre, ball tipped, penalty marker down. Ball was tipped by Brian Lape. It was intended for either Bellamy or Marquise Walker. Holding the call on Michigan. Good pressure up the middle by the Broncos defense. They only came with four, and when you get it, induce a holding penalty with four, you're getting some pressure up front. Holding on the offense. Penalties declined. Third down. It'll be third and 11. They can get some pressure off their base four-man line with those defensive ends. Well, their defensive ends, as you said, that's where their strength is, and you saw 93 Babin doing a loop underneath and he just beat the exchange in the offensive line and by himself put the pressure on third down Western likes to bring an extra rusher or two the bars pass a little bit too tall for Bellamy who had Jermaine Lewis on his back anyway would not have made the first down Browning the defensive end providing some heat well, it's fourth down. One thing that shouldn't catch John Navarre by surprise is Western Michigan will come after you play after play after play. They play, as you said earlier, with five defensive backs, mostly a nickel look, but they blitz them almost every play. Josh Bush back deep to receive this punt from Hayden Epstein. The ball caroms into the end zone. So it'll be first down for Western Michigan at the Bronco 20-yard line. Jim Barber. Lloyd Carr had some concerns for his family coming to today's game. Talk about it. Indeed, Wayne. Lori Carr was scheduled to come to today's game and has, but as of Thursday night, when the Carrs talked at home, Lloyd said to his wife, you sure do you want to come to this game with all the security concerns? And she said, I will not live in fear. I plan on being here today. And today she is here. Thank you, Jim. First down for Western. Ferry Ogan in motion. Michigan jumping into the neutral zone. Reed going nowhere. Carl Diggs led the charge of Wolverines to the football. Well, Jeff Welsh has done a nice job of drawing this Wolverine defense offsides. When you're getting your brains beat out back there at quarterback, you're looking for any advantage you can to slow down the pass rush. Snap count is a good way to get a quick five yards and also keep those guys back on their heels make them hesitate a little bit offsides a call once again against Michigan second time the Michigan defense has been penalized for a violation of the neutral zone first in five not a very accurate throw there diving attempt made and it's incomplete Tended for Kendrick Mosley underneath the coverage of Victor Hobson, the linebacker. When we talk about how Welsh will spread the ball around, 12 different receivers on this team. They've only played two games. 12 different receivers. 
have made a reception. And we've seen a lot of the, the dink and dime type of passing, the shorter passing game, but yet they do have three receivers that are averaging over 20 yards. So they are capable of making the big play as well. When they spread the field like this, they try to get a receiver, what, covered by a linebacker or safety perhaps? Just a one-on-one -on -one match. Not necessarily that, but they'll take advantage of that. Welsh got a man open. Broken up by Drake. Tended for Micah Zool near the Michigan 45. And a good recovery defensively by Charles Drake. Boy, that's just what we talked about there. They're looking for the one-on-one -on -one matchup. We talked about their ability to go deep. This time, Welch just didn't quite have the protection to get enough under this ball. But, boy, Zool was well behind Drake. And as you said, Drake did a nice job of recovering back there. Ball goes right off of his, his shoulder pads, his helmet, but a little better throw. Could have been uh, six for Western Michigan. Third down, five. Set up a little bubble screen. Mosley makes a nice move to get the first down across the 30-yard line. Drake responding on the tackle. Mosley's a good receiver to run that kind of play. He's a big receiver, six foot three. And when you need five or six yards for the first down, you got to count on breaking some tackles. And he's big enough, strong enough to be able to break those tackles. And that's what got them the first down there. Missed most of last year, broke his wrist in their game at Iowa. Missed the rest of the season. But it's a guy they feel he could, be, he could develop into a go to guy in the future. Extra help close to the line for Welsh. And I think the official had great coverage on that play intended for uh, Johnson. Brandon Johnson, their flags down. <laughs> Judging from when they were thrown, I would think perhaps holding in the offensive backfield. Nope. Ineligible downfield. One thing that Gary Darnell told us yesterday is his team has got to be able to throw the ball to open up the running game. Unlike uh, the traditional thought of the run opens up the pass, the yep. pass has got to work to open up the run. Ineligible receiver downfield. The outside receiver was covered up. Penalties decline. Second down. One of those problems that you think happens. It's not going to be good from the alignment. You're covering up an eligible receiver that makes him ineligible. He goes downfield thinking he's fine and he gets criticized. It's the other guy's fault. The outside receiver should have been flanked, right? Correct. Reed in motion, empty backfield on second down. Short drop for Welsh, tried to hit the tight end of Ferry Ogan, and he was pretty well covered. Drake and Hobson were right there near the 39 yard line. Ferry Ogan has been hurt, just came back uh, two weeks ago. Got into the rhythm a little bit, but this is really the game that, that they expect him to be back and to really be a contributor. He really is a difference maker. He's got to be a threat in the receiving game. He's a threat as a, as a very good blocker. He's a deep threat as well. And they've really missed him and are glad to have him back. He had a uh, hand injury. He missed the opener in Illinois State. Just three of nine from this type of distance. And the blitz by Cato June Welsh. Cannot evade the rush. It came in waves. Another sack for the Michigan defense. It's their fourth of the day. Well, as you said, this pressure comes in waves. And, and here as Welsh is trying to avoid one or two, that disrupts your timing. And then when a defense sees the, the pressure and the play being disrupted, they just keep coming after him. And again, Welsh has just been under, under pressure and wisely doesn't try and force something, but just takes the sack and lives to punt the ball away. Anderson shanks this one. It gets a Western jump for a moment and is down inside Bronco territory near the 46. Back to the studio, Mike Gleason. Oh, Wayne Champagne, Louisville at 3 0. Illinois trying to get to 3 0. Kirk Kittner, that's the fullback, Kerry Davis. All eyes on Brandon Lloyd, so Kerry Davis gets a touchdown instead. It's now 10 7, Illinois over Louisville. Wayne? Hard to get a read, Mike, on Illinois. We saw them impressive at California. Struggle to beat Northern Illinois at home, and now today in a battle with Louisville. They'll be playing Michigan next week. That'll be a big, big game. Big 10 opener for both teams. Perry 
up the middle for a couple. Well, that was uh, an interesting dilemma that uh, had the Michigan Athletic Department uh, a little on edge earlier this week in that today was to be the Big Ten opener here at Michigan Stadium between Illinois and Michigan. But when they were able to maneuver schedules, now you had the teams in the right places, but now you had fans planning to come in for this game against Illinois this week. Well, and, and it took a lot of maneuvering to get everybody in the right place. It sure place. did. Matter of fact, the fans are sitting on the field today for that reason. Penalty marker down as the tackle's made inside the 40-yard line. Lape, the linebacker, on Chris Perry, and again, flagged down. Thrown right in the area of offensive holding. Chris Perry gets up limping on the play. Holding the call against Michigan. Michigan has had excellent field position the last two possessions after there short Western Michigan punts, but yet penalties and lack of execution. On the offense, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul, repeat, second down. You, you heard there, penalties and lack of execution have driven them backwards, and now they have to overcome that penalty, and they're facing now second and long. Under a minute to go, first quarter. You get the impression just looking at Lloyd Carr's body language on the sidelines that he understands that it's going to be a little hit or miss here in this first half, perhaps, for his team. He, he's willing to accept that there are going to be some mental breakdowns here early. Second down. Ask you. Running hard back into Bronco territory to the 49-yard line. Coming in from the secondary, Brandon Brown. Jason Malloy in the linebacking core also there. Boy, Jason Malloy did a nice job of chasing that play down, coming up and putting a nice hit and uh, holding that to a pretty short game. Red, white, and blue day here at Michigan Stadium. The crowd got back into it with the maize and blue scored first. Wayne Larrabee, Randy Wright, Jim Barber. We start the second quarter with Michigan facing a third down. About 12 yards to go. The 49-yard line, Bronco territory. John Navarre. Got a man open for a first down. Calvin Bell. To the Bronco 22-yard line. Joe Ballard and Brandon Brown made the stop to the studio. Mike Leeson. Way North Carolina is at home against Florida State, but Ronald Curry's on the bench. This is Darian Durant's little play action. 20-yard strike to Sam Aiken. Dives in. Wow. North Carolina on top of the Seminoles. 7 up. Wayne? Spectacular play, and boy, that's won the cockles of the heart of our director and producer here, North Carolina Durant. Durant. Walter Cross, first carry of the game. Nets about five inside the 20-yard line. Let's take a look at the Saturn first quarter stats. You look at those rushing yards for the Broncos, and all those sacks come off of the rushing yards, but it also it shows you how they just haven't been able to get anything going. Michigan had pretty good field position for the most part, but look at four sacks. Boy, that, uh, that's an afternoon, much less a quarter. That'll back you up, won't it? Second down. Brackens the fullback in motion. Penalty markers down early. Perhaps a procedure penalty coming up against the Wolverines. Looks like the left side of the Wolverine line moved while the back was in motion. Five yard penalty remains second down. Five penalties, 30 yards against Michigan. And Lloyd Carr is not happy about it now. Let's take a look at the Red Roof proficiency. This season overall on the campaign, not necessarily today, but this season, Michigan touchdowns on six of nine forays into the red zone with two field goals. Well, eight out of nine scores is very good. 67% of those being touchdowns, that's excellent. You did that math in your head, did you? Well, but I knew we were going to show that graphic, so I did it early. Oh, okay. Just trying to set you up, Al. More flags. These flags aren't red, white, and blue either. They're yellow flags out there. Prior to the snap, false start, offense. Five-yard penalty remains second down. Thirty-eight. Crowd on hand. There was some talk that maybe not everyone would was ready to come back for a in the stadium. 
the bar. I can get that ball off to my. Thirty-two. Play action. Dollar per. Rely on a pass. Josh Bush that time has just got to beat Marlon Jackson there, or the result's going to be what we just saw the interception. John Navarre and company back on the field. And although this may be their worst field position to start a drive, they're happy to be back offensively without the defense having given up a point yet today. 10 0 Michigan. A little over 10 minutes to go, second quarter. Askew trying to make his read, but nowhere to go. Boy, a good solid tackle put on the play by Jermaine Lewis. He is a good looking cross. Plays more, he's a weak safety, but he plays more like a linebacker. Exactly. Than a lineman. Six fours, only 200 pounds, but he's an excellent, excellent blitzer and a very fast guy. He's kind of one of those track guys. He's got that track kind of speed and very tall, but very coordinated for his height. Gain of a couple on that play, so it's second and two for Michigan. Eric Rosel, the man in motion. Nice catch. And he could not hang on. Seymour got two hands on it. Bill Seymour, the fifth year senior, co captain, or I, sh I, should, I should stand corrected. Sean Thompson is the tight end, who's the co captain. Bill Seymour, though, is one of the go to receivers for John Navarre. Just couldn't quite hold on to that one. It speaks highly, though, of the success and the confidence that Bill Seymour has and the confidence that Lloyd Carr has in him. Sean Thompson hurt the knee last year, was out the, almost the entire season, is a captain this year, came back, and really it's Seymour that starts and has been very impressive. He has, and uh, they say Thompson is uh, getting close to 100% now off that knee injury. Suffered it against Bowling Green in the opener a year ago. Third down, Michigan. Ask you to the Running back Chris back guys he's icing down that left knee it is a sprain left knee but he wants to give it a go it's a lot tougher takes a Michigan bounce Eight yard punt and Lee takes over in enemy territory ever watch the nature channel along with Randy Wright and Jim Barber Wayne Larravee back at Michigan Stadium Western Michigan starts this drive in Michigan territory, the 47 yard line. First and 10. They wanted to go to Bush on the reverse, and how about the game? Larry Foote is having. He is literally living in the backfield of the Broncos here this afternoon. Boy, these guys for the for the Wolverines are doing a nice job of seeing the play develop in front of them and coming under control. Once again, as you said, Wayne, they wanted to go with the reverse, but foot season early penetration will always destroy any kind of a trick play. And right there, foot came in and did a nice job of, of, of reacting to what he saw. We had six tackles behind the line of scrimmage last week or two weeks ago. He's got three already today. Second and 17. Little deception there, and Reed finds a nice hold up the middle for a whole lot more. <laughs> marks at the 17-yard line of Michigan, a 37-yard gallop.
you're getting penetration, you've got to go to draws and screens, things like designed to maybe pick up eight or ten, but Lear made that into a lot bigger play than it could have been. Lloyd Carr. 37 yard run. Western Michigan threatening again. Welsh has time, drills the middle, touchdown! Micah Zool, the senior from St. Joseph, Michigan. He came open early, right after the play action fake. He was wide open. I thought Welsh took too long to get him the ball, but he threw it low. And if you're going to throw the ball laid over the middle, you better throw it low. And it turned out to be a perfect spot. Zul did a nice job of going down and making sure he put both hands on that ball, making a nice catch. Menchinger for the point after. Bad snap. Good hold. And the kick is good. Wes Dotson did a good job of getting that snap down. Take a look at this touchdown pass again. Watch Zool come in from the right side of your screen. Right there. He's open. He's open. Oh, then he threw the ball. Had to throw it low to get it around Brackens. You throw it late over the middle. Keep it there. Excellent spot. Zool once again goes down and makes a nice catch. And this time, Western Michigan with good field position. This time they take advantage of it. They had to do something on that drive. And they did. They jumped right back into it. Marquise Walker, a threat in the receiving core for the Michigan Wolverines. Time now for We Know You, brought to you by Sitco. Proud to support today's athletes. And this was a threat in more ways than one. Desmond Howard. Not long ago here in these parts. Heisman Trophy winner. You know what I've always wondered about Desmond Howard? Why wasn't he more of a threat as a wide receiver in the NFL? He's been a great kick returner, MVP of Super Bowl 31, but as a kick returner. Well, I think he's had the success as a kick returner in the NFL, but as a wide receiver, I'm not so sure he ran the most disciplined routes. And, and I think in the NFL, it's even more important that you run discipline routes down to the yard. Menchinger's kickoff. Curry. Make that Charles Drake on the return across the 20 to the Phillips 66 Sports Center in-game studios in Mike Gleason. Hey, Wayne and Randy, uh, Michael Vick may be gone, but uh, Grant Noel is 8 for 8, and this is his third touchdown of the afternoon. Terrell Parham, five yards, and Virginia Tech, 28-0 now over Rutgers. Wayne? You know, we were talking to the Western Michigan people last night, uh, Mike, and wondering how good is Va Tech? Pretty they, darn they, good, they, aren't they? They were they? pretty <laughs> doggone good. Yes, they did, because this is a pretty good Western Michigan team, and Virginia Tech handled them very well. First down, Michigan. Navarre, lots of time. Askew in the flat, lots of running room. I'll tell you what, for a big man, and Askew goes 6'3", 224, Randy. He has very nimble feet. Well, and, and that's one of the reasons they have him now at fullback instead of running back, because he's an excellent blocker, but you can get your fullback involved in the passing game so much easier, and they have taken advantage of that today. Askew has been effective coming out of the backfield, not only uh, running the ball, but mostly catching it. Walter Cross got to the 40. The white shirts of the very well. Brian Leif helped them. Confidence. The last time they were on the field, they held Michigan to a three and out after the interception, forced the punt. Now their offense put some points on the board, so you'd have to think this defense went out there ready to get back involved. Yes, I would too. To the Western Michigan 12-yard line, Calvin Bell. Wayne shows the bar has excellent protection underneath it. Calvin Bell does a nice pass play. A little bit. It's going to go against Joe Ballard in Western Michigan. You referred earlier, Wayne, to the fact somebody else is stepping up, and Lloyd Carr hadn't been real. Calvin Bell making an early statement. Pass interference on the offense. 
pass interference on the defense. Those who are offset, replay, first down. You don't see that call very often. You no, know, I think obviously we saw why there were three flags down, and we're going to miss a little bit here. It's hard to see where the contact began. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you know what? It could have began right at the snap yeah. based on that. So uh, at least they conferred, came up with what they felt was the right decision. Ask you going to the short side. Now we've seen B.J. Askew called to run to the short side of the field on a couple of occasions inside the red zone. Randy, what are they looking for there? Well, I, I think he's got excellent vision, and things get a little closer and happen a little quicker when you get down into the red zone area. And I think because of his experience and he's he's seen so many different things, I think they just feel he gives them the best option. You also don't involve your fullback so much in the passing game when you get down here. So why not take advantage of Askew and put him at the, at the Halfback position, tailback. Second and five. Ask you bouncing it. Touchdown. Two hundred twenty five pound BJ Ask you vaulting into the end zone. What we just talked about is vision, play design to go inside, nothing there. You mentioned earlier his foot quickness and his agility shows that right there as he makes that. And then a nice effort to get into the end zone. Epstein for the point after. Michigan extends its advantage back to a 10 point lead. BJ asked you for the three yards. God bless America weekend here at Michigan Stadium and the Wolverines are doing their part on his uh, jersey. And he's got principal deep back Ronald Rogers from the two still on his feet and Jeremy Lesseur escorts him to the chalk marks on the far side and flags are down late maybe for a face mask. 52 yard return and they may tack a few more onto it. I think they clearly are here. You see the, the setup. You see the wall in front of him. Nice job. Then just the missed tackles. Excellent speed that time as you saw by Rogers. There's the face mask right there and you're right Wayne. They're going to tack a few things on here but when you get behind your wall, your, your wedge of blockers, it doesn't take a huge hold for somebody like this to get through. They give him a chance to get the momentum, then it's just missed tackling. Take there's a look. the face mask. There's the face mask. The last time this Bronco offense had the ball, excellent field position, turn it into a touchdown. Face mask was a big one. This is going to give them excellent field position down at the 32-yard line. This is an offense that's not going to grow conservative. They're going to keep coming at you. Last time Western Michigan played their team, tremendous amount of penalties. This time, as you just saw, there are eight penalties against the Wolverines, and we're still in the first half. And off the penalty, Jeff Welsh sets up shop at the Michigan 32. Four receivers set. Bush got a block from Jennings to pick up a couple of more yards down the sideline. Hobson forced him out. Just under six minutes to go in this first half. Michigan leading by 10. Let's take a moment to thank another one of our Big Ten corporate partners, WorldSpan. Second down at about four. Welsh over the middle off the hand of Bush and he was in traffic the time he had draped all over him Dan Rumashek a big defensive end and Cato June was uh, in the neighborhood as well well when Michigan gets their back to their own end zone they're going to start coming after you and they've been putting pressure on Welsh all day I think he's expecting that that ball needs to hold on to that a little bit longer there really wasn't any pressure he was under there that play needs to develop a little bit more Threw the ball a little quicker than he had to receiver wasn't expecting that but when you're getting your brains beat out for a quarter and a half that tends to happen 
trio of receivers to the top of your screen, one to the bottom, and they've got motion going here. Welsh. First down. Mike's tackle made by Todd Howard, but he was beaten by the circle route of Marco Wolverton. Jim Barber, this has been an interesting week, to say the least, for the head coaches of football teams around the country. How do you prepare your squad in light of what's going on? What did you find out from Western Michigan? Well, guys, Gary Darnell said the high school football that was played in the Kalamazoo area did a lot for healing in terms of getting guys back focused and feeling a little better about things here in the United States. And as for his football team, believe it or not, he really downplayed the game with Michigan. I don't think he wanted his guys to get too excited. And you're seeing that calm, that calm demeanor on the sidelines. It's working well here on the playing field as well. Five receivers set here. That's uh, five receiver, three linemen. Uh, it, it's a goofy set. Yeah, Different really. set. And uh, they flinched. So they'll back it up. Well, I thought Coach Darnell made a good point. He said it was the healing process began on the high school level. Offense. Dennis Five yard penalty remains first down. With the call. He said, you know, the healing process in terms of getting back to playing football began on the high school level town to town community to community this week it's a little bit bigger than that it's state, state, to state. To state and tomorrow of course in the NFL the nation returns to pro football so it was kind of nice to, to he really brought up a nice analogy there penalty situation that was only the first down to Western Michigan today they had 10 last week penalty marker thrown pass sailed incomplete Jeff Welsh with a big flak jacket on as he's needed it. There's another flag here today, and this one may go against Michigan. Nope, it's going to be a hold against Western Michigan. So you commented, Wayne, 10 last week, their first one today, and then two plays in a row. Holding on the offense, 10-yard penalty, repeat, first down. Sometimes you can you can outsmart yourself and Western had good field position they just picked up a first down then you try a little trickery it's something that's a little out of your routine they they have the first penalty for lack of, of uh, a proper alignment and now they get pushed back and then the holding penalty brought on with that so sometimes you try to do too much and it backfires now it's first and 25. Mosley in traffic and going nowhere fast. Lesur and Drake all over that play. One thing, Wayne, I think Michigan has excellent speed on their defense. And when you spread them out and you go to five receivers, you ha you cause them to go to five and six defensive backs. There you saw Charles Drake from one of his safety positions come up and make the play. And when you're at five receivers, three receivers, they go to five defensive backs, six defensive backs. You give them the opportunity to put more speed on the field. And I think they've really taken advantage of that. Second down. Welsh had time initially and now takes a sack back outside the 30 yard line near the 35 fifth sack of the day Jackson blitzing from his defensive back spot and Norman Hoyer on the defensive line. Well one of the questions that Gary Darnell had how well will our interior offensive line hold up they're a stronger team than we are and if they put pressure up the middle with our three and five step drops it's going to be a long day for our quarterback. That's where the pressure came right there. Now Jeff Welsh needs to get his team in field goal range. It's third and 31. Probably not going to pick up the first down. At least give us a chance to get three. Another timeout taken by Western Michigan. I believe they are out of timeouts now with 346 to go in this first half. So Gary Darnell and company will talk it over. Don't forget, coming up, the Discover Card Halftime Report with Mike Leeson. Wisconsin and Penn State. Joe Paul going for a milestone victory in that one. Louisville and Illinois, traditional rivals, plus stats and highlights from this one. Along with Randy Wright, Jim Barber, Wayne Larrabee from Ann Arbor. Beautiful morning, sunshine, and crisp, cool temperatures. It's given away to some cloud cover here in the Ann Arbor area. But otherwise, a most pleasant afternoon. This drive began for Western Michigan at the Michigan 32-yard line. It is now backed up to the 35. And if you're thinking first down for the Broncos, they would have to get to the four-yard line 
of Michigan. Coming up next week, we will be at Indiana down in Bloomington. Antoine Randall L., who's been split out at wide receiver, but you see him in action as a quarterback here, a Heisman candidate leading the Hoosiers against the Ohio State Buckeyes next week. Check your local listings for the game time in your area. Third and long. Welsh tried to hit Bush, threw it behind him. Bush was covered by Hobson. And Larry Foot. A lot of pressure again on Welsh. Michigan coming with blitzes from the outside and good pressure upside. And now without any success, anything going right there. Western Michigan looks like they may even try and go for it here on fourth down. Kind of one of those in between. Uh, too close to punt, too far to go for it, but uh, too far for the field goal. But with fourth and 31, boy, that's a. Uh, yeah, th th this looks like it makes a little more sense. Welsh trying to hit the corner of the coffin on the far side, and he very nearly did. That hit about the three yard line, Randy, and kicked just a bit sideways. Instead of going out of bounds, it went into the end zone. Th did a nice job of just getting that off. He there did. was some pressure up front. Did a nice job of getting it up, and as you said, just so close to getting it right out of bounds in a perfect spot. I beg your pardon, I believe I said Welsh. That was not Welsh on that punt. That was Wes Dodson who dropped back, number 16. All 14 games against the uh, teams that presently comprise the MAC Conference have been played here at Michigan Stadium. Notice the attendance for that last meeting between Western Michigan and Michigan. Navarre on first down. Calvin Bell has stepped up. That's his third reception of the day. Gain of about six. Good practice here for the Wolverines. Even though you're up by 10, you start over on your own 20-yard line. You're not in a hurry up yet, but you want to be able to work your two-minute drill, get yourself out a little bit further, let the clock run down, and then you can go into a two-minute drill. Important to at least have a rhythm here, try and get at least three points on the board. That's your first thought. Four receivers set on second down for Michigan. Bellamy's got a first down at the 32-yard line, and that stops the clock with 2.55 to go. You know, Wayne, I don't think that Western Michigan is really doing anything to take Marquise Walker out of the game plan. I don't really see John Navarro looking to Walker near like he did against Washington or really trying to force the ball in there. I think his reads are taking him in another area, almost just pre-snap reads before he even gets the ball. Hmm. Slots it up to the bottom of your screen, and they're running. I ask you hit that hard up the middle. Gain of about three. Malloy, the linebacker, in to make the stop. Boy, he hit it pretty hard, but there really wasn't much room there at all. That was a question mark for Western Michigan, the interior of their defensive line and their linebackers. And I'd have to say so far, though, Michigan hasn't had a lot of success running the ball in the middle. It's been more the, the wide screen passes and the flare passes to the outside. Blitz coming. Navarre sidesteps it. Nearly intercepted twice. Ronald Rogers had his hands on it, couldn't hang on. Brandon Brown on the blitz. Boy, two opportunities for Western Michigan to make a big play. First of all, they have Navarre in deadness sights in the backfield and doesn't get the sack. Take a look here. You just got to make this play right there. You can't let the quarterback get away. And then you have the opportunity to make even a bigger play with an interception. So they're 0 for 2. Now, Navarre's not the easiest guy to bring down at 6 6, but you got to come in under control and at least disrupt the, the play right there. He just ran right by him. Navarre standing in as long as he can, and he paid the price. Play was whistled dead before the fumble. Brian Lape all over that play along with Josh or Chris Browning. Western Michigan showing some a change of pace here on defense putting pressure on Navarre two plays in a row and uh, that time got to him. Bush 
Let's this one go and it's a tail dragger. Takes a Michigan roll inside the 20 and Western Michigan will begin at the 18 yard line Bronco territory. Well that drive started out for Michigan with what I'm sure Lloyd Carr wanted to see a few quick passes a few plays some positive yards but then they couldn't handle some of the pressure that Western Michigan threw at him. Now Western Michigan goes out there thinking almost the same thing minute and a half to go. We've got a quick rhythm offense. We're capable of making some big plays. Let's not give up a sack. Let's not turn the ball over. But let's see if we can move this ball down here and at least get in field goal range. So Welsh takes over at his 18 yard line. No timeouts left for Western. A Ferry Ogan could not hang on. Larry Foote, the principal defender. Was that pass just a little bit behind on his back hip? Uh, a li little bit, but Ferry Ogan usually will make that catch, and the ball was, uh, you know what? Mm. No, it, no, it, it was a little behind. It uh, it was inches, and that ball you got to catch him. Yep. You got to make that play. Fortunately, as that ball got tipped up, it wasn't intercepted. Well, she put the ball where it needed to be. You got to throw him in the body when you throw him over the middle. That's right where that one was. Three receivers set. Nice hole. Reed across the 30. He's had a couple of good runs here this afternoon now. You know, Taylor he, June, John Shaw on the stop, 16 yards there. You know, Wayne, he's not a real power runner. He's good size, 200 pounds. He's got good speed, not great speed. He's not a real power runner, but he's shown more power than what I thought he had. You know, it's funny, he's not a power style runner, but he's a very strong kid. Bench is well over 400 pounds. Nice catch made there by Kendrick Mosley. Did he get out of bounds? A minute 12 to go. Apparently he did to stop the clock. Well, that's one thing in the college game. When you don't have any timeouts, it doesn't hurt you near as much as long as you're getting the first downs. It stops the clock a lot, gives you a chance to get that offense up there. Western Michigan is used to that with the style of offense and the quick rhythm that they run. Second down at about three yards to go. Good protection. Intercepted by Todd Howard. Pass appeared to be off the mark intended for Darnell Jennings. I'm not sure if there was miscommunication there, Randy, or not. I, I, I don't know. I think it was just a, a poorly thrown ball here. There's good protection. And he just, his receivers were not wide open, but sometimes they're not going to be wide open. You got to put the ball in a spot where only your guys can catch it, especially when you're throwing the ball deep. And that just wasn't a, a wise decision to throw the ball there. It turned out to be a, a big play for Michigan now. Michigan has all three of its timeouts. The freshman, Braylon Edwards, first catch of the day, a true freshman out of Detroit. Ronald Rogers steers him out. Michigan is in Western Michigan territory at the Bronco 49 off a gain of 16 yards. Nice job by John Navarro recognizing the uncovered receiver and getting the ball to him quickly. Edwards wide open. Western Michigan wasn't set defensively and what should have been a four or five yard play turned into a big one. Stan uh, Parrish the offensive coordinator says that Braylon Edwards watch him. He could be special someday. Navarro takes it himself. John Navarre's a tough kid. He was a high school defensive end before deciding to concentrate on quarterback. So he's got a certain amount of toughness to him. He got a toughness, but I think he made the right decision. Yep. Changing over to this side of the ball. And Lloyd Carr has been impressed with the way he's developed, even though the Washington game was a loss and the touchdown was an, it was an interception return for a, a touchdown. It wasn't necessarily a bad throw. It, it was, was off the hit throw. Chris Perry. Chris Perry basically bobbled the ball up. But Navarre really grew up in that game. Lloyd Carr said, you know, he's going to make mistakes. He's a young quarterback. All young quarterbacks have ups and downs. We don't want to see the same mistakes consistently made. And he's going to develop as a leader. And you have to develop the confidence before the rest of that's going to happen. To get inside the huddle of your favorite Big Ten team, go online at www.big10.org for all the football and conference news from around the Big Ten. I believe they pronounce that org. Org. You're computer illiterate, much more so than I am. <laughs> oh. 
Yeah, you know, you just keep, <laughs> you, you just can't figure anything out on your own. Yeah, game, yeah. not at all. I, I rely on the people around me. Sometimes the supporting cast is better than other times. But I always rely on it. Second and short. Going deep. Walker, touchdown! They've had a lot of great receivers here at Michigan in Lloyd Carr's seven years, and Marquise Walker is fast becoming one of them. But when you have somebody else step up, now the defense has to start looking in other areas. They forget about Marquise Walker just in time for him to step up and make a big play, but what a beautiful pass by Navarre. Laid that ball out there perfectly. Right down the boulevard with the extra point from Hayden Epstein. Marquise Walker, 40-yard touchdown play. Well, there's not a lot of imagination in this route. I'm just going to run right by Jermaine Lewis, and then he does a nice job of watching that ball all the way in, and here's Navarre looking to his left the whole way, the whole way. Now Walker's even with him laid up there and puts beautiful touch on it, and it just turns out to be a nice play, but, oh, geez, what a, a nice throw to get that ball to Walker. Jim Hart, the old Cardinal quarterback, used to say you got to put some air under that play. Jim Barber, what do you have for us? Guy Stan Paris was telling us yesterday how John Navarre, as a sophomore quarterback, relying a little bit too much on him and wants to kind of cut the apron strings. I think we're starting to see some of that here in the second quarter. Likes to judge his quarterbacks as to whether they look him in the eye. And perhaps Navarre will be doing a lot more of that here at halftime when the quarterback and the offensive coordinator convene at halftime. Jim, when you're doing things the right way on the field, you got nothing to hide, and it's a lot easier to look your coach in the eye when that's the case. And I agree with you. I think Navarre has really done a nice job here, picking the right man and then making the right throw. It is Hayden Epstein who will kick off now. Ronald Rogers bobbles it, has to step back to pick it up. Doesn't make the 20-yard line. 39 seconds to go in this first half, and Michigan in front now by a big margin of 24 to 7. Western with no timeouts remaining, and I'm not sure Gary Darnell and is going to let Jeff Welsh get too creative here. No, I, I don't think that they're going to take any risks right here. 24 to 7. They've had some opportunities offensively. They haven't taken advantage of, of near enough of them. I think they want to go in and regroup and come back out and be a little more efficient in the second half. This is the first time it's believed in the history of Western Michigan that the Broncos on the football field, as Reed gets the call, have played two ranked opponents on consecutive football weekends. Virginia Tech two weeks ago, Michigan this week. It not only good teams obviously with being ranked but physical teams yes uh, you'll, when you play in physical teams when a max school plays a bigger school one of the things you question is do we get beat up physically and when you're playing two good teams like that that are physical then you even get beat up more well that time Jake Freisinger reached over and made contact well, I can tell you one thing Lloyd Carr is going to talk about at halftime and that is watch the ball guys offside Defense, made contact, five-yard penalty, result of the penalty, first down. The coaches just hate to see that, and Jim Herman has got to be fuming. Jim Herman, the defensive coordinator, has got to be fuming because that, that's a lack of discipline, a, a lack of concentration, and you just hate to see that as a coach and your players. And the first half winds to a close. Well, Michigan sputtered a little bit early but got on track offensively and some big plays have led to a 17 point halftime advantage on a red white and blue day here at Michigan Stadium the studio coming up next with a halftime report. Along with Randy Wright, Jim Barber, Wayne Larravee back in Ann Arbor, Michigan leading as we get set to start the third quarter of play. First half stats. 
Michigan the big plays leading to a almost eight yards per play average the two turnovers hurt the Broncos the penalties nine penalties against Michigan kind of dogged them a little bit but again able to make up for it with the big plays and Wayne those five quarterback sacks that's by Michigan's defense which has put the Broncos in second and third and long numerous times Robert Menchinger from Elkhart Indiana redshirt freshman kicking off Marlon Jackson on the far side, on the near side, Todd Howard. Sunshine has given way to overcast skies here in Ann Arbor. Line drive kick bounding across the 10. It is Howard. Short of the 20 yard line. Good coverage by the Broncos. Individually in the first half. Welsh the two interceptions hurt but he was getting battered early and often in that first quarter Reed had a couple of nice runs Navarre was solid throughout and who's stepping up around Marquise Walker in the receiving game for Michigan Bell and Askew different kinds of things too and just as those guys step up Askew out of the backfield uh, Bell's made a couple of big plays but then right after that when you think that that's where they're going Marquise Walker comes up with the big 40 yard touchdown reception there was a penalty on that kickoff and they're going to have to do it again. And it wasn't on Michigan and Lloyd Carr is happy about that it was on Western Michigan. Well that is a little bit different. <laughs> <laughs> Several of the penalties against Michigan right at the line of scrimmage. Well and those are the, the lack of concentration penalties that we talked about. They're not really the aggression type of penalties. Coaches can usually deal with those. They don't like to see the concentration stuff. This will be the true freshman. Marlon Jackson kept his footing after absorbing a hit of the 19. He was able to spin his way up near the 26 or 27 yard line. So does first down for Michigan. Lloyd Carr talked about how much John Navarre really developed and grew up in the Washington game got into his rhythm did some nice things and I think he's pretty much picked that up in this game and that was something that Lloyd Carr needs to wants to see needs to see him develop with still a young quarterback as we talked about but now with the lead you've got to be able to protect it and play smart I'm sure that's one of the things he's going to be looking at with Navarre in this half BJ Askew leads it off first plunge of the second half out to the 30 gain of a couple of yards Chris Perry suffered what was described to us as a bruised left knee in the first quarter of the ball game and we haven't seen him since although Jim Barber reported that uh, Chris wanted to go right back in there but the medical people got the better of that say ask you power and speed to the 40 yard line of Western Michigan a 30 yard gain Rodgers and Lewis made the stop a touchdown saving tackle Boy, you just got to be impressed with the ability B.J. Askew has the vision to see the hole the ability to get through it excellent blocking up front especially by his tight end right there 83 Joparu but look how he just can see that can burst away and he runs so smoothly it doesn't look like he's going that fast cross Stacked up a bit. Malloy, the linebacker, came through to put the finishing touches on that tackle. Gain of maybe a yard. We talked about it during our discussions with the coaches. This Michigan offense, Randy, you would figure will get better. I mean, let's be honest. B.J. Askew, Chris Perry, Walter Cross, they didn't have a lot of experience coming in because there was a fellow by the name of the A-Train, Anthony Thomas here, who did the bulk of the ball carrying for this team. Plus on the offensive line, the Wolverines have replaced four four-year starters in their line this year. Navarre Seymour the tight end to the 35 yard line and Jim Barber you had an opportunity to talk with Lloyd Carr what did he say at halftime it's a very unhappy Lloyd Carr guys even though his team's up 17 he said the play in the first half inexcusable penalties ridiculous we played like a football team that had been off for a period of two weeks he did tell me he thought John Navarre's play in the second quarter much better than the first he's standing in there getting himself in position to throw the football likes his follow through but he wasn't a happy guy of course he will be without Chris Perry for the rest of this game due to the sprained knee and he wants to see a little bit better fundamental football in the second half Navarre asked you short of the first down so it'll be fourth down for Michigan 
Ronald Rogers had the coverage. Well, well, can you imagine how Lloyd Carr would be if he was down 17 with all those well, penalties? <laughs> <laughs> and, and fortunately, if you have that many, that number of penalties, usually you are down, or at least you're not up by 17. But the key mistake right there, John Navarre had B.J. Askew open, doesn't hit him in stride, falls down, and doesn't get the first down. And now this is why they're in this fourth down predicament. But because of the quick timing right here, forces Western Michigan to use one of their timeouts. Yep. So first time out of the second half Gary Darnell and company will get their alignment set when we resume. Back in Michigan that's Dan Parrish the offensive coordinator of the Wolverines. He's done a great job with the quarterbacks in this program under Lloyd Carr. Several of them are playing on Sundays now. <laughs> that's a good point. Fourth down Michigan two of three on fourth downs this season and they get it here to the old reliable tight end Bill Seymour fifth year senior out of Granger Indiana I mentioned earlier he and Navarre have developed a little bit of a rapport it's kind of a chemistry Randy something like what you had with Al Toon back in your Wisconsin days well it's natural that you just develop that kind of rapport with one of your receivers but even here a little better pass Seymour is wide open and there's nothing but green grass between himself and the goal line Take your time, get the ball out there, hit him in stride. That would have been a touchdown, not just a first down. First down at the 25. Walter Cross had a sliver of a hole off the left side of the offensive line. And Brian Lape, the linebacker, a junior out of Jackson, Michigan, made the stop. He had a big fourth down tackle at Virginia Tech the last week early in that ball game. When you talk about some of the backs that Michigan has had, and whether it's been B.J. Askew or Chris Perry, Walter Cross, a senior who hasn't really been used that much throughout his career. The big advantage that Anthony Thomas had last year, as you mentioned, was those four senior, four-year starters in the offensive line. Uh, what a what a stand those guys had in a career they had here. This is Underwood, a freshman, a penalty marker down early in the play. David Underwood, a true freshman from Madisonville, Texas. I believe I said Michigan was replacing four four-year starters in their offensive line. That's not quite true. The four-year starters they're replacing are Steve Hutchison and Jeff Backus along the offensive line, and both are starting for NFL teams now. They replaced four starters, but all yes. of them were not four-year starters. No, just those two. And those are two of the best to play here. Michigan's always had great offensive linemen. Here is the call from the official Dennis Lipsky. Illegal shift on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat. Second down. You can go all the way back to the days in the early 70s. Dan Deardorff played here at Michigan. Well, that's one of the things that they've been able to do is develop those offensive linemen. And then, just like last year, they got to a point where they knew they could do anything they wanted to do offensively. This year, they're going to have to develop into that. And they're still getting some answers to some of the questions that they're still asking at this point. On a delay, ask you. Boy, does he have great vision. All the way to the end zone. Touchdown. 26 yards. Well, you don't have to give BJ Askew much. And as you said, Wayne, just great vision to see. There's the hole to the left. It fills up. He sees it open back to the right. And then when you've got the ability to make those moves, and he's such a smooth runner, you don't have to give that guy much to get something big out of it. Epstein's extra point is good, and Michigan enjoys its biggest lead of the afternoon with 10.50 to go in the third quarter. B.J. Askew from 26 yards away, his second touchdown of the day. B.J. Askew has scored on the ground twice through the air once. Three touchdowns on the day for Askew, his first three-touchdown game in his Michigan career. Three touchdowns today, and I mentioned that one of them through the air, two by Land. Philip Brabs set to kick off. Michigan leading 31 to 7. Rogers. 
decides to down it, take it to the 20-yard line. Jim Barber, what do you have for us? Gary Coach Darnell, Darnell and missed opportunities in the first half. Wayne and Randy talking about his Western Michigan team. Did a lot of good things, but because Michigan was doing a lot of blitzing in the first half, they didn't pick up on the blitzes. He says if we can do a better job of protecting our quarterback in the second half, some good things will happen. So let me see if I understand this. Gary Darnell wasn't unhappy with his team and optimistic, and Lloyd Carr was unhappy and rather pessimistic. That's coaches, huh? <laughs> That's football. Yeah, it's a good point. <laughs> That's football. <laughs> the sledding has been tough for the most part for Reed, who's made a couple of good runs here today, but not much there. No, Wayne, and even the runs that he has made, they've been mostly on his own. There hasn't been much room, and he's gotten through it and broken some tackles, but on a consistent basis, Michigan's pretty well shut that run down. You know, when we talked to Gary Darnell last night, he mentioned the fact that he felt the big disparity in Big Ten schools and Mac schools was right between the tackles in the middle of the offensive and defensive lines. And I think that's been borne out here today. Bush roped down by Victor Hobson. And it'll be third down coming up for Western Michigan. I mean, Elaborate on your point that has been a big difference and I think you talk to most Mac school coaches and they'll tell you it's different players that the big schools have he didn't really seem to think that was the case with his team they've got quite a few players and, and a large number that they thought were solid players who could step in there and play but it's the strength in the interior lines both offensively and defensively and Michigan has dominated there third and two good protection a first down the big tight end able to shake free in the secondary and Charles yard line Jeff Welch is not unlike throw it very accurately and choose the right receiver this is a nice window is is a key tight end that is is obviously glad to have back been a big part of the game plan here today but if you don't give Welsh the time to throw no quarterback can be a pass. Welsh that time overshot Ferry Ogan had a little bit of pressure coming up from the uh, defensive line. Rumashek was there. Well, sometimes when you run a play and the couple previous times to running that, you've turned around off of that fake bootleg and you've had somebody right in your face, you kind of anticipate that. And this time when you turn, there's nobody there, you really don't know what to do because you're expecting to get hit. Four receivers set. Read the loan back. Reed gets the call and ran into a wall of blue clad Michigan defenders. Stevens on the bottom of the pile. Shante Orr and Norman Hoyer also in on that stop. Well, you've called a lot of names in the maze and blue today, especially on the defensive side of the ball. And that's one of the things Jim Herman has said is they have a lot of depth back there. A group of nine linebackers and there's a pretty good one right there in Larry Foote, but really any one of the nine can be out there and he feels pretty good about it. Third and about nine blitz coming. They pick it up. Jennings on the catch for a first down to the Michigan 30 yard line to the studio and Mike Gleason. Wayne and Randy, uh, Florida State in the series 11 on one against North Carolina. Right now they trail Darian Durant. Almost the same play before he scored. That's a second touchdown pass for Durant. 55 yards, Chelsea borders. It's now 17-9 Carolina. Let's go back to Ann Arbor. Wow. They must think it's a basketball game. Did, did you see? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they did. <laughs> Maybe Florida State sent the basketball team this weekend. The tight end of Ferry Ogan down to the Michigan 20 yard line. Diggs makes the stop in the linebacking core. And you could just about count the number of losses by Florida State in ACC play in one hand over the years. It doesn't take long. It, 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 like you said, it's one hand and it's a quick count. But here, Western Michigan, what you want to try and do, Wayne, just get back into your rhythm now. You're down 31 to 7. Yep. You've given up a lot of sacks, a lot of pressure on your quarterback. Start concentrate on and don't let the game dictate it just try and move the ball move the chains then move the ball a oh, good decisive throw Mike Azul yeah. well, that's that's the approach I think Jeff Welsh has had this drive he's throwing the ball with confidence like you said a nice decisive throw 
again makes a nice catch over the middle but a, a little different Jeff Welsh this drive confident getting time to throw the ball his offensive line doing a nice job of picking up the pressure. Short drop by Welsh quick throw in traffic nicely done Brandon Johnson the touchdown reception four yard touchdown play. Looked like Todd Howard on the coverage boy what a nice job of execution by Jeff Welsh and Brandon Johnson Welsh drops back quick three steps delivers the ball gets it low so Johnson can catch it in his body and just throws a spot and boy I tell you that was pretty that good, was coverage. good coverage My Howard goodness. was right you defend you defend that is you don't let the receiver get to the inside Howard could do Menchinger for the point after something to cheer about on this star spangled weekend at Michigan Stadium lead an impressive 80 yard nine play drive Jeff Welsh was six of seven 79 yards on that drive no sacks on that drive that's the case with a lot of quarterbacks it is it? <laughs> it is that's why it's a team game especially offensively short kick Marlon Jackson this kid's gonna be exciting too Show through the air and by lane. He has the ball in his hands, but the, but the vision and the way they get him involved as a blocker, fullback, as a carrier from the fullback position, as a carrier from the tailback position, he's got that vision and he, he's a wonderful receiver too. So yeah, I, I don't ever think you lose an Anthony Thomas and you don't miss him, but I tell you, it sure does make it a lot easier when you have a guy like B.J. Askin. Screens it out. Oh, that time BJ got nailed. He, he was labeled by Jermaine Lewis. We're at Michigan Stadium. Over 109,000 on hand here in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Along with Randy Wright and Jim Barber, I'm Wayne Larrabee. It's good to have you along. All right, thank you, Wayne and Randy. Bill Martin, one of the busiest athletic directors in the country. AD at the University of Michigan I was asking him earlier today how things are going and he said well got to figure out what day it is this has been a very traumatic and at the same time somewhat healing last couple of weeks uh, today was I think the culmination of a healing process I think everybody wanted to come to Michigan today to show that they wanted to get their lives back to normal but you're absolutely right ever since September day the life of Michigan athletic department has been turned upside down I'm just so pleased that we were able to Western here today another state school they haven't played Michigan since the 1940s it's taken them over 60 years to get back on our schedule and we got them here today and it's all excited that we're here many concerns about security coming into this stadium what can you tell us as to what has progressed so far today well I think you can tell to begin with that you don't hear the roar of airplanes overhead we were able working with the FAA to get a ban on all airplanes not only banner towing airplanes but all air traffic over Michigan Stadium and we got that last Thursday and as soon as we got it so many of the other schools in the country also wanted to ban the planes that the FAA just banned planes from on top of all college stadiums and, and we're proud that we could play a all right thank you Bill and I know it's Bill's efforts to have that season for the University of Michigan Wayne Randy more problems in the punting game for Michigan Nick Melcher blocks the punt Melcher coming right up the middle and just gets his hand up there and blocks it but what you said rings so true more problems in the kicking game here second look on the block but either way they get excellent field position Adam Finley the punter and he didn't have much of a chance that pressure came right at him up the middle and, and it, it came from Back outside the 40 yard. Like Michigan, where something bad happens, they come right back and try and be a man and comes up with a big play. Hobson, along with Larry Foote, the two linebackers, maybe the most consistent players Michigan's defense has had this year. How about the sack total today? Welsh, good protection this time. Now, let's it go. Incomplete. Diving attempt made by Micah Zool. 
pressure that Michigan is putting on Welch. Consider the kind of offense that Michigan, that Western Michigan runs, that quick rhythm, three-step, five-step, get rid of the ball. I think they're getting the receivers to the line of scrimmage, which is disrupting the timing. But I think the push that they're getting in the interior line has just been overwhelming. Well, a quarterback that when he gets into a rhythm can really hurt you. And he hasn't been allowed to get into a rhythm for the most part outside of the last drive. Wobbly pass there. Nice catch, but out of bounds. Nice catch by Marco Wolverton. One of the deep threats that Western Michigan has, but really has not been involved at all today. That excellent coverage makes a nice catch, but excellent coverage by Howard. And, and today, 109, 837 in attendance. Well, there, there was some some hope or some thought that they may set a new record today because of thousand short, but I'm sure they're happy with 109. Box. They try to get what eight guys in the box basically up near the line. Well, they do, and, and some of those are their safeties because they play with five defensive backs, and that's the key. They need to get four linemen and four other bodies in that box to shut down the run. And it's a tough position to play if you're one of the safeties because you got to be fast enough to cover and pass coverage, yep. but yet big and strong enough to run support. Second down for Navarre. On a delay, ask you breaking tackles and then powering for the first down. B.J. Askew, he was hit in the backfield initially and would not go down. First down on a gain of about 10. Boy, individual effort. Here you see Browning almost had him there and then just faces up late and breaks that tackle, which should have resulted in a third and long for Michigan with no missed tackles, turns into a first down because of excellent effort by B.J. B.J. Askew has just gone over the 100-yard rushing mark for the first time in his Michigan career. Navarre, all day. You're down, Walker cannot hang on. <laughs> a handful of Marquise Walker. Navarre did a nice job once he saw that Walker had pretty good position. Automatic first step. There you can hear the call, which is no surprise. You by Navarre to lead the receiver into the open spot. You know, I think that's going to be the flag, but I think the one that misfired was the center. I just think the ball came. You think a fifth year? <laughs> <laughs> that's what Kurt Anderson is. Started, which is a tribute to the line that he played behind, as you mentioned. I think that's what they're discussing right now, is there looked like it was something very awkward, but I didn't see anybody else move other than the center, and obviously he's the one that initiates. Literally, they do. And now let's get the call. We'll Literally, figuratively, in every way they pick it up. In every way. <laughs> well, that's it's a play, and you it's a play. So Jopru, Benny Jopru in for Calvin Bell in the Michigan lineup. Jopru is fast becoming a, a target at the tight end spot. They are so deep at that position, Randy. They may have five tight ends in this program who could start for almost anybody in the country. Ask you. This time, JoJo Mesa is a junior college transfer. We spoke of him earlier in this Western uh, defensive core. And you mentioned that what Western's playing for here today is not so much victory today, but to get their game together, to get ready to start hitting on all cylinders for the upcoming max season, which begins next week. They struggled against Virginia Tech, a lot of penalties. They wanted to get back in and have something positive to build on. Certainly at this point. That nice catch, Mark Walker, first down to the 43-yard line of the Broncos. Lewis and Ballard in the neighborhood defensively. 31 to semi-comfortable lead. And I want to go out there and play this game like it's zero and get that kind of execution. Off the hands of Jopru, incomplete. And if Kevin Coleman had looked up a little bit earlier, he might have been able to around, not giving Western Michigan something to spark their interest here. It's a 10-point game. Mm -hmm. 
You talked about those five ten in that can play. Uh, if Benny Joffrey drops. Such good speed. Get the fact he's 6'3", 230 pounds. I mean, that's a big back. Tackles, and even when he hadn't broken away, he's carrying them forward. He had it his first two years at Michigan. Another big back with speed. David Underwood is a freshman. We mentioned him earlier. A huge tailback at six feet. High school level in the last three seasons, setting a school record with Michigan. They come up about a half yard short. Officials timeout. They want to measure this. Yes, they do. Well, the chains on the other side of the field, they want to come over and make sure. Plus, Lloyd Carr probably wants to do two things. Find out how short they are, but he's really just buying some extra time to let his offensive coordinator think about what play he wants to run. They're short by about a foot, it looks like. I think one thing that Michigan wanted to accomplish today was trying to establish some other receivers besides Marquise Walker and in effect, they've done that. Uh, Walker has three catches. He had uh, an impressive touchdown catch right before halftime. But they've gotten some other people to step up and obviously ask you in the passing game out of the backfield. And Calvin Bell has uh, had a pretty good day, had a good first half. Calvin Bell's been impressive. And, and I think Lloyd Carr was also concerned, how is the team going to come out? The last time we played at Washington. Then you have the events of the last two. I asked him, where, where is your team right now? And he said, I don't know. I don't know where they are in terms of their development. Navarre and the quarterback sneak. Not a bad call when you've got a 6'6", 245-pound quarterback that we mentioned the last time we were here three weeks ago. Well, I think defensively, he knew where his team was. He, he knows what to expect from them, and he pretty much knows what he's going to get out of them. Offensively, that's where the question marks have been. And, and the biggest one is going to be how quickly will John Navarre develop to the more and more. Underwood. Piling it forward to four or five yards. Boy and Pinder on the stop. Wayne, you see David Underwood in there this series and has been doing a nice job, but I've got to think that this team, the staff, has been more impressed with B.J. Askew, and he has given them more than maybe what they really 27-yard line. Tenth play of this drive coming up. That maybe John Navarre has thrown a little bit better and more with just touch. It's the, the farther the ball goes down the field, the more likely the receiver is going to have to adjust. So you need to put more air under it. Had that happened, Marquise Walker may have had a little more time to get there. Remember what I said about that? Maybe the last play of the third quarter. This is the third. <laughs> you said that play like eight plays ago. <laughs> play of the third quarter. Of about 44 yards out of the hold of Navarre. Bad snap. Navarre gets it down. Epstein's kick to the uprights. No good. So the final seconds tick away in the third quarter. Flags on jerseys and flags everywhere here at Michigan Stadium on a star-spangled weekend and a lot of emotion after a great halftime performance by the band. Back on the campus of the University of Michigan. Score by quarters in the third quarter, though it was a 7-7 standoff. Michigan held the football for 10 minutes and two seconds to 4.58 for Western Michigan. Western Michigan starts this drive, first down at the Western 27-yard line. Not a hole out there on the first play of the drive for Reed. Shante Orr made the stop. Along with Randy Wright, Jim Barber, I'm Wayne Larrabee. Great to have you with us for Big Ten football today. And Michigan at times has been impressive in this ball game here today as they get set for Big Ten action coming up. Especially defensively. Offensively, one thing they have done well is they made some big plays. They've had some good timing, and some of their players have stepped up. Some of their key players, Askew Walker, stepped up made some big plays. Absolutely, and they were able to spread the wealth a little bit in that passing game, which Lloyd Carr intended to do. Second down at about nine. Make it eight. Welsh off the vacant backfield. Antonio Thomas stepped out of bounds before picking up the first down at the 35-yard line. Just keep it here. Eric Diggs forced him out. Penalty marker down to the offensive backfield. 
In the first half, Western Michigan was relatively penalty free. On the defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Roughing the quarterback, the call against the Michigan defense. So that's a major. And we'll move the football out to the midfield marker. Michigan leading 31 14, but if Western was to get on the board well, well, you, early here in this you, fourth quarter, especially with something big, then uh, with their style of defense, we've seen a couple of near uh, near turnovers. You, you just never know, and I'm sure that's a thought going through Lloyd Carr's mind. Larry Foote's coming on the blitz. Welsh. Stevens finally gets him to the ground at the 44 yard line of the Broncos. Jim Barber. Thanks, guys. Stephen Baker is a defensive lineman for the University of Michigan, and the words let him be alive ring well in his house. His father, Robert, was around the World Trade Center tragedy back on September 11th, but not in the building. He used to work there back in 1993, but that bombing back then by terrorists forced him. To a building across the street so as a result that day he was not in the World Trade Center and at that particular point at the day of the tragedy he was actually getting off the subway it turns out that neither Stephen Baker or the rest of his family guys knew if his dad Robert was dead or alive and in fact it wasn't until later in the afternoon that his mother called from New York and said dad is okay and Stephen obviously relieved cried and cried and cried throughout all the tragedy and all the sorrow with the victims and the destruction we've seen there is a story of joy that has come from one Stephen Baker and his family and really Jim uh, as Lloyd Carr told it Stephen Baker is the senior who stood up and, and said we've got to play this football game meaning last week absolutely and you couldn't blame him because he had such a patriotism such a strong feeling knowing that his dad was alive and well that the rest of the team was ready to follow him third down for Welsh got a receiver wide open it's Jennings for a first down and Marcus Curry forces him out at the Michigan 35 a lot of room on the outside here for Welsh to hit his receiver especially on third and short and oh it doesn't look like much Western Michigan has put a little thing together here overcame that sack and got a first down and as we referred to earlier Wayne that discomfort level is growing in Lloyd Carr now. Mm -hmm. Welsh fake the pass. Reed trying to break a couple of tackles gets it inside the 35 on a gain of a couple of yards to the 34. Larry Foote made the stop for Michigan. Very active linebacking core for the Michigan Wolverines and they've got some talented people on the flank of the defense as well led by Todd Howard. This is where Michigan throughout this game has stepped up the tempo on defense started coming after Welsh and for the most part had great success doing it. We've got a true freshman at cornerback in Marlon Jackson. And he's at the bottom of your screen right now. He's playing soft coverage. Welsh looking to throw hit as he throws. Incomplete. Diving attempt made by Jennings the receiver but Welsh was under heat right away Shante Orr. Well you saw Larry Foot number 17 coming from what would be Welsh's right but it was Shante Orr from his defensive end position that came from the left and got the pressure. Shante Orr I don't think he's ever got over the fact that he was a high school quarterback and they moved him to defense here. And he kind of has always wanted to go back to play quarterback. Well he kind of outgrew the position Randy they said well, you can't play quarterback at 250 pounds and he said well what about the guy in Minnesota. Dante Culpepper. Illegal substitution. The offensive team broke the huddle with 12 players. Five yard penalty remains second down. Well, so that's uh, one of those nuisance penalties. They kind of get in your way as you start making your drive. Well, it, it's one of those things on third and seven. Yeah. And third and 12 makes it a big difference, much more so than just five yards. It takes longer for the plays to develop downfield. And with the lack of protection Welsh has had, uh, just as another obstacle to overcome. But back to Shante Orr, I think he's done a pretty good job of defensive man. I think I'd leave <laughs> over there. Yeah. He wants to play quarterback, though. I don't think he'll get the chance to do it here. Welsh. Cato June with a high tackle attempt. I don't believe it was a face mask at all. Wolverton on the reception. 
Nice catch. What that play does is it will now put Western Michigan into a makeable fourth down if they choose to go for it here, which I think they will. Now at fourth and six, a lot easier than if it's fourth and long. Take a look at the tackle here again. Uh, nice job holding on to the ball, but a clean hit. Fourth down, about six. Four receivers set. Read the loan back. Welsh, first down. A Ferryogan, the tight end, inside the Michigan 25. At the 22-yard line, Cato June ushered him to the chalk marks. What a nice job all the way around by this Bronco offense. The blitz was coming. They picked it up well. Take a look at the right side of your screen. Picks that up well. Welsh throws the ball with a lot of touch on it before a Ferryogan had even turned around but put it in the right spot. Ferry Ogan does a nice job of separating. Just a nice job all the way around. Just under 12 minutes to go in the game. Western trying to climb back in it. Welsh on the run. Penalty marker thrown. Maybe in the area of holding. Or an illegal block perhaps on the rollout. Illegal block. Well, it's not a surprise. It can't be a surprise to Gary Darnell that Michigan is coming after them offensively. But often, what happens when you move your quarterback in the pocket, it changes the angle, the rush comes, and therefore the holdings, the illegal blocks, those things happen. Sharp block on offense. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat, first down. This is kind of what happened to them in West Virginia. They'd get something going with the Broncos, and then Gary Darnell was saying all of a sudden it'd be first and 10 at like the 20, and then we get a penalty, and now it's first and 15. And you're really backed up at that point. Well, it's hard to play yourselves and the other team at the same time. First and 15, first and 25, in this case here, off this penalty. From the Michigan 35, Welsh, a little comeback route. Kendrick Mosley for a short gain to the 29 yard line of Michigan Hobson and Drake covered him what Western what uh, Western Michigan likes to do this play looks very similar to the one we saw a couple of plays ago it is the same play all they've done is change personnel you come out with a different look makes the defense think you're doing something different but you really just run the same play second down at about 19 Josh Bush in motion the hands of Jennings and he had the true freshman Jackson in his shirt Jackson in high school 18 career interceptions for which he returned for touchdowns pretty good coverage excellent coverage it was a pretty good throw here it's a spot where you gotta you put that ball maybe a little bit too a little a little too much mustard on it but boy catchable ball especially when you catch it in your yep. body and when you got to catch in that situation absolutely because then you'd be looking at a uh, third down and maybe eight or nine, but now it's third and very long. And this is what they've done on eight yards or more. One of six from the deep set. Welsh to the side. The catch is made by Brandon Johnson. They are short of the first down, but face another fourth down. It'll be fourth and about five at the 15 yard line of Michigan. And the second time on this series, that uh, Western Michigan has faced a fourth down. Let's take a look at the red roof in red zone proficiency. Western Michigan, four chances today, a couple of touchdowns. Well, the fact they've been down there now, this is the fifth time they've moved the ball offensively, and generally it's been something they've done to stop themselves. Here, fourth and five, lots of options, lots of different things you can do. Three receivers sent. Welsh, a Ferry Ogan denied the first down. I believe he's just short on fourth down. What a tackle made by Cato June. Well, you get the man to man coverage that you want. You hit your receiver in stride, and you got to count on him. If you get him the ball before he gets to the first down, you got to count on him to pick that up. 
they're going to measure here, but I think you're right, Wayne. I think it's going to be short. Take a look here. Welsh hits his man right in stride. It is just excellent coverage. And I'll tell you, Cato June at 225 pounds is big enough to bring down that big tight end, and he did it one on one. Ferry Ogan, 6'4 and about 240. And they are short. The ball goes over to Michigan on downs. Western continues to trail by 17. Oh, one of the great sights of college football, the venerable press box at Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Along with Randy Wright and Jim Barber, this is Wayne Larravee. Better than 109,000 on hand here today for Michigan and Western Michigan. B.J. Askew has had a great day running the football. He picks up a few yards there. Let's go to the Phillips 66 Sports Center in-game studio. Mike Leeson. Wayne, Florida State, North Carolina. Another touchdown for UNC. Darian Durant has a couple of scoring strikes. This time it's Ronald Curry off his back foot. A little wobbly, but wide open. Corey Bailey, 53 yards, 20 unanswered points. Carolina, 27, Florida State, 9. Wayne? I believe there's a moratorium on coverage by Florida State defensive backs. Going for Walker, who was held up. Walker jostling all the way with Joe Ballard who has had his work cut out for him today on the defense 15 yard penalty from the previous spot automatic first down well you see Joe Ballard there arguing his case we'll get another look here and see how much interference and where the ball was going to come down Uh, he's holding he, he him right there. Like he's holding him. Uh, I, I don't know what he's right there. About. Nice job by Navarre again, putting the ball out in front of him in a very clear, clear hold. I don't know. Walker might have been able to catch up with that, but well, it, it wasn't interference. So, well, yeah. it was interference, but it should sure. have been a holding call. It was interference, and uh, I don't know if he would have been able to get to the ball, but either way, Walter Cross got back to the line of scrimmage. Okay. Allsbury and Coleman collaborate on the stop. We haven't called his name much, and that's Anthony Allsbury. He's the Lombardi uh, candidate. They call him a special player. Came back from a leg injury in the game at Virginia Tech and made some plays. Former walk-on was named to the league's top unit a season ago. These, de these defensive ends for Western Michigan, Allsbury and Browning, both juniors, just outstanding. Solid, good players. Second and ten. Overshot. Walker did Navar. Jim Barber. Guys, there's been a run on American flags in this country, and why not? Great patriotism. Michigan, uh, indicative of the flag fever in this country. And, of course, ordinarily Big Ten flags across this great stadium, but today it's American flags. Some local seamstresses have worked on jerseys for the University of Michigan with the flags. And on top of doing the work for Michigan, Big Ten officials have flags on their jerseys. And down the line, Michigan State will get some help with local seamstresses in Ann Arbor to get jerseys taken care of as well. Just a great story. Navarre. Too tall for Marquise Walker there. It's fourth down for Michigan. Did I hear you right, Jim? You said the seamstresses in Ann Arbor are going to be doing the stitching on the flags for Michigan State's jerseys as yes well? you, wow. you heard it you heard it right Wayne it, it turns out that one of the ladies that's doing it a Miss Alberts well she's a longtime Michigan football fan but she says she doesn't mind helping out Michigan State I guess both of her children graduated from there so that's the that's the reason behind her efforts plus some patriotism I'm sure it'll be first down for Western Michigan just across the Bronco 40 yard line when we resume well, it has been a collection of flags and every type of jersey imaginable here at Michigan Stadium today. Back at Michigan Stadium, Western Michigan will start this drive at the Bronco 41-yard line. And Jeff Welsh has distributed his passes to eight different receivers here today. Three receiver set. Welsh waited a long time. Good protection up front. 
a ferry gun made the catch and he steps out of bounds in the vicinity of a first down but just short well you talk about all the tight ends that Michigan has five uh, roughly there about that could be playing much more often somewhere else than a ferry gun well, I don't know if any of those are better than what we've seen with him. He yep. has got a. He runs he's well. He's only a junior. He runs well. He catches the ball when it's not perfectly thrown. Uh, really been impressive. Second down, about two. One with the empty backfield right through the hands of Kendrick Mosley. That's dangerous when it pops up through the hands of a receiver over the middle and that's short of pattern. Western Michigan trying to take advantage of Michigan not recognizing quickly enough the formation set snap the ball and get something out of it. Uh, they only needed a couple yards but you got to make that catch. You cannot afford to drop those kind of balls. You know as his numbers here and you see he's been sacked seven times 339 yards that's a career high for him. So he has faced the adversity. And, and an excellent completion percentage. Uh, quite a few drops and uh, several he's thrown away under duress. May have changed the play of the line there. Oh, the jailbreak is on. The Wolverines all over the quarterback. No chance there. Shante Orr, among others. Freisinger was in there. Boyer was downfield as well. Well, excellent coverage downfield. It starts downfield. The receivers can't get open. You see Welch is only going five steps. He's set up right there. Boy, jailbreak is right. There's just not anything open quickly enough down the field. Eighth sack for the Michigan defense. Hunt formation time. Adam Anderson's kick does get a Western Michigan roll to the Michigan 30 yard line where the Wolverines will take over with just under eight minutes to go in the game. The Eagle stands tall atop Michigan Stadium. First down for the Wolverines. New quarterback is Jermaine Gonzalez. Taking over for John Navarre. Spencer Brinton is uh, considered to be the second string quarterback. Uh, Gonzalez is a redshirt freshman, an intriguing prospect out of Pontiac, Michigan, Orchard Lake, St. Mary's High School. That high school, by the way, that he attended, it has produced seven NFL players. Second down. Walter Cross made the first carry of this series. Seymour, the tight end, gets the first down to the 44 yard line of Michigan. Brian Leip made the stop. You know there's a little controversy going on at the quarterback position and not with Navarre but who is the true solid number two quarterback between Spencer Britton and Jermaine Gonzalez and uh, here Gonzalez getting a little bit more of a look. Gonzalez on the rollout. Wide open Seymour. To the Bronco 22 yard line. Sam Reynolds finally got him to the ground. Well executed to roll out. Well, with this kind of lead, you think they want to be running the ball and run the clock out, but you want to give your second string quarterback a chance to see some things and make some things happen. And a nice little bootleg and a nice throw. And Seymour again turns that into a big play. It, once again, another tight end stepping up and making something happen. 34 yard reception there. Seymour now four catches, 53 yards on the day. Underwood. We take a look at the Outback Steakhouse, outstanding back of the game, and it's BJ Askew. Those are career highs in rushing yards and receiving yards, and it's the first three touchdown performance of his career. The man shake it up on the uh, field for Western Michigan. Their defense has been on the field a lot in the second half. Matter of fact, Michigan held the football better than 10 minutes of the third quarter alone. Brandon Brown, defensive back, is down. Brown is the free safety, a senior out of Miami, Florida. They're kind of hobbling off a little bit for Michigan is Tony Pape, the left tackle. And while we have a break, let's step away with 6.14 to go in the game. Michigan leading Western Michigan 31 to 14.
Big Ten game is brought to you by Cooper Tires. A lot of mileage for the money. Cooper Tires. Drive on. Red Roof Inn for affordable rates at over 350 inns nationwide. Call 800 Red Roof or book online at redroof.com. BMW test drive the ultimate driving machine at your local BMW center. And by Mobile Speed Pass, today's way to pay. Along with Randy Wright, Jim Barber, Brandon Brown was helped off the field a few moments ago. And now Michigan resumes this drive. Brown, a free safety, starting free safety for Western Michigan. Wes Dotson replaces him in the lineup. Underwood again, plowing forward. And it appears he's got the first down, down to the 11-yard line. Wayne, these Wolverines next week, they take on Illinois. And you talked about the fighting Illini earlier, and they're kind of up and down with a, an impressive win, then a struggle. And uh, beating Louisville relatively handedly today, I think 27-10 was the last score we got. And I think as the Wolverines have developed over the last couple of weeks, I think they're getting themselves in a nice position to go into that game. I don't think there's any question about it. This Wolverine team is getting better as the season goes along. How about that hammer of a drive into the left side of the line by David Underwood. Our drive of the game brought to you by Mobile Speed Pass. Today's way to play, to pay and play if you want to look at it that way. Six plays, 73 yards for Michigan. That gave them a 31 to 7 lead. First drive of the second half, and that pretty much set the tone for the rest of the day. Well, when, when you cap that with the last drive of the first half, the big touchdown cast by Walker, then to come out and, as you said, set that tone for the second half, uh, that was impressive. Sealed, sealed the victory for them. The freshman Underwood, ever closer. This time inside the five, down near the three, and a gain of three tough yards. Well, this kind of gut check time for Western Michigan. They've got their backs up here. They don't want to give up another score. Michigan is going to keep pounding. They're going to run the ball in here. They're going to try and get this score. And, and you know, Gary, excuse me, Gary Darnell is you know, trying to find out a little bit about what his defense is made of in, in their gut check here. So this will be a good opportunity to answer some of those questions. Brandon Brown went out a few moments ago. We mentioned that he is suffering from a bruised knee. And he may return, we're told. On third down, Gonzalez. Russell cannot quite hang on. Penalty marker down. Eric Russell, part of the uh, large stable of excellent tight ends, offsides against Western Michigan. Russell, a fifth year senior. Offside defense. Half the distance to the goal. Resolve the penalty. First down. New life on this well, series. Big mistake right there. Would have been fourth down. Now you get a first down and a lot of cracks at it. Western Michigan pretty much penalty free in the first half. Now has eight penalties for the game. First and goal. Why not? Underwood. Just short. If he had spun, now they the signal for a touchdown. Late in coming. Are they going to give it to him? One official said touchdown, but he had his. He came from the far side. And now they confer it is a touchdown. David Underwood had to wait out his first collegiate touchdown, but he got it nonetheless. And there is the freshman. Well, it's a nice effort. He did a lot of the work on this drive, and he gets to finish it out. And you don't really know whether to celebrate your first touchdown or not. And the official on, on this side, which had the look at it, never did signal. It was the far official, but his hands went up relatively immediately. Epstein's extra point is good and there are flags down to the play. Penalty markers down. Another conference. And apparently it's against Western Michigan as they're talking to the Michigan people. 
12 players on the defense. That penalty's declined. The try is good. A little over four minutes left to go in the game. Lloyd Carr and company in command. This is the biggest crowd ever to see the Broncos of Western Michigan play a football game. Biggest prior to today was 85,000 down in Florida. I believe that was in 1999, but better than 109,000 on hand here today. Philip Brabs will kick off for Michigan. The Wolverines leading 38 to 14. Kind of a swift kick. Ronald Rogers. Ooh, good tackle made on the play. Nice undercut move by Philip Brackens. Wayne, take a look at the quarterbacks today. Both of them relatively accurate and big plays. 339 yards, 240 yards. Navar taking advantage of his trio of wide receivers, but uh, pretty impressed with both of them. Of course, Welsh throughout the entire day just under constant duress. I believe eight sacks today by Michigan's defense. And he's probably been hit 28 times. Well, the senior continues at quarterback. One of the few times they've been able to get Bush involved, and the Wolverines snuff it out pretty well. Short game there. Emmanuel Cassius and Todd Howard made the stop. Jeff Welsh comes from a football family. His brother is the starting quarterback at Idaho. Two weeks ago, when Jeff was playing at Virginia Tech, Idaho was playing down in Arizona. So dad went to Arizona and I imagine brought the golf sticks with him and mom went out to West Virginia to Blacksburg. How do you think they decided that? I don't know. <laughs> nice throw there. Tight end on the reception and it'll be a third down coming up back to Jim Barber. Guys you've shown today the great patriotism in this stadium. How about the generosity? We talked about the program that you could buy for a number of dollars today and it would go toward the relief for the victims and their families in New York and in Washington and over thirty thousand dollars raised by donations for those programs in fact they're going to sell a few after the game as well in addition canister student athletes had cans around campus collecting quarters and dollars and dimes they got over five thousand dollars and one other item they took the cans up to the press section and the press donated over eight hundred dollars mm. Well, that's because Randy Wright kicked in a nice little stipend there. <laughs> I tell you, taking it up to the press, that may be the most unusual thing that happened today with the <laughs> fact that the press was willing to give anything. Charles Woods on the carry there. Gets the first down for Western Michigan. How much of that will show up on an expense account, though? <laughs> yeah, the generosity of everyone, everyone in this country trying to do their part. And it has been gratifying these last couple of weeks, that aspect of it. Well, still in there firing away. Got a first down on a lunging grab made by Darnell Jennings up near the 44 yard line. A nice catch by Jennings. Nice job keeping his concentration on this ball. I believe it gets tipped. I think you're right. right it there it gets tipped and then it starts turning sideways, but comes right to him and he keeps his feet in bounds and a nice job six catches 88 yards for Darnell Jennings he's played well here today Jeff Welsh in the final two minutes of this one another sideline pattern brought down in play was Brandon Johnson by Curry Marcus Curry the brother of Julius coming up next week the Ohio State Buckeyes 21st ranked team in the nation playing later today at UCLA head to Bloomington Indiana to take on the Indiana Hoosiers we'll see Steve Belisari at quarterback for the Buckeyes you mentioned earlier you talked to Lloyd Carr where's your team he really didn't know I think there's some questions going on over in Columbus too as to where that Buckeye team is the penalty markers down on the play are for an illegal substitution made by Western Michigan Marco Wolverton came on the field late and I think the penalties are being getting to get to Gary Darnell the head coach uh, and, and I think they should he played such a disciplined good first half to have one penalty in the first half yep 
And in the, in the second half, it, it's the officials haven't been shy about throwing the flag. There are multiple fouls on the play. Illegal motion on the offense. That penalty is declined. Illegal formation, only six players on the line of scrimmage. That, play, that penalty is accepted. Five yards, repeat, second down. So it'll be a second down coming up for Gary Darnell and company. They get at it against Eastern Michigan next week in conference play. Second and nine. Drop over the middle to the studio, Mike Leeson. Well, Wayne, Wisconsin, Penn State, that's the final. Joe Paterno still on 322. They're at Iowa next week. Wisconsin wins that one. Purdue coasts after leading by three at halftime. The big surprise, though, ACC. It's North Carolina 41-9 right now over Florida State. Let's go back to Ann Arbor with Wayne and Randy. Wow. I tell you what, the production truck here in Michigan is rocking <laughs> because we've got two North Carolina grads at the control of this telecast. Eric Swearingen, our producer, and Tim Sutton, our director. Well, I got to tell you, I'm just impressed our producer and director went to college somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Careful now. Wells and a tripping call coming up here. Brandon Williams appeared to be beaten on the play by Kendrick Mosley. And that might have gone for a touchdown had he not reached out and tripped him. You know, you think there's any, uh, let's pile up the score on Florida State after the, the many, many beatings that Florida State has handed out in the ACC year after year. You think there's any of that going on? I think there are a lot of teams in the ACC thinking about doing that. Maybe more fantasizing about it that. Do, it but doesn't happen a lot. <laughs> you know, North Carolina today is doing it to the fifth ranked team in the nation. Meanwhile, Lloyd Carr in Michigan. Lloyd not happy with the first half. We need to, at least that's what he told Jim Barber. I think he's still got plenty to coach on, but nonetheless, he's going to get a comfortable win here today. Mike Azul, the man in motion. Ferry Ogan dropped it second time on this series. And about the third time today. That is six drop passes today. Well, we talked earlier about how accurate Welsh has been, and his numbers are impressive and would even be more so without the drops. But a Ferry Ogan, you don't see that very often. And as you said, two plays in a row, and I think it's a sign that the concentration has left. In, the, in their opinion, with less than a minute to go, the game's probably over, and he's going to get a chance to think about it right there. Yeah, and you can see the wrap on his left hand and wrist. Maybe that hand injury is still bothering him a bit. He missed the opener, as we mentioned. Welsh goes over the middle. Bush close to the first down of the 30 yard line. If not, he's got it. But we'll check it out. Charles Drake made the stop. Bush has a lot of quickness and speed. They just have not been able to get it to him very often here today. On occasion, they have, but they're just short of the first down. Fifth catch for Bush. Made the one big play in the first half at a 47 yard reception. Running back Charles Woods for first down and more inside the Michigan 20 yard line. Well the healing process I think has begun at arenas like this across the country as America gets back to some leisure time for a break from the real world. Timeout is called on the field. And Western Michigan trying to milk this drive maybe put some points on the board. The flags will be on the uniforms for the remainder of this season at least. This has allowed people to come together not only to enjoy college football to, but to display their patriotism. And that's something that is uh, necessary in the healing process. You know Wayne that's a good point. I, I think a lot of people really took pride in that was a way to come out here and, and join together as a group and show that it was a wonderful pregame a wonderful halftime ceremony and, and really a sign of two teams that will play against each other but you only do that on the field during the 60 minutes of the game but before and then at halftime really was one unit final 30 seconds of this one and on the all time ledger Michigan and Yale are going to apparently remain deadlocked Yale leading Cornell 24 to 6 in the third quarter 100 years ago 
Yale was uh, was Michigan huh? a football factory. A football factory. <laughs> they had to play each other to decide it. Yes. Wells trying to thread the needle to Bush. Not that time. John Shaw the coverage. Well it, it looked like he threaded it pretty well. It looked like it was a very well thrown ball. Pretty good coverage again. And we have said that a lot today. Welsh is going to have a, a fair amount of incompletions. You throw the ball over 50 times that's going to happen. But boy those drops are mounting. And it doesn't make any difference in the game at this point. It just looks worse statistically, but not on the game film when you're looking at the performance because he's throwing it right where it needs to be. Welsh dumps it over the middle. One tackle missed, and Darnell Jennings brought down inside the 15 yard line with 16 seconds remaining to be played in the game. And a timeout taken by Gary Darnell and company. Marcus Curry made a sure tackle. Well, you take a look next week, and Ohio State goes down to Indiana, and Antoine Randall-L, and we've seen him at wide receiver. We've seen him at running back. But you know where he's at his most dangerous? At quarterback, because he can incorporate all of those abilities. You know, I, I think you, you when you've got maybe the most exciting player in the Big Ten, if not in the country, arguably in the Big Ten and in the country, why would you give him the ball every play? Why would you let him touch it every play? Exactly. You've got to get him touches. And I have a feeling before this season is done, uh, that'll happen. But this is the 13th drive of the, the 13th play of this current drive for Western Michigan coming up. 16 seconds to go. Western's now out of timeouts. I think you're right, Randy. Gary Darnell just wanted to. Again, get his offense into a rhythm, get him a little more repetitions out there. Give him more snaps, give him more looks. Uh, go into the into uh, next week's game, putting 14 points on the board in the second half if they can do something here. Welsh looking to the end zone. Incomplete. Boy, that was literally glove-like coverage by John Shaw on Josh Bush. 11 seconds to go calling a lot of different names here in this Michigan secondary and they're not shy playing a lot of people we talked about the depth they have at running back and the depth they've got at linebacker and now you're seeing a lot of different names out there in their defensive secondary and that's one thing Michigan's been able to do throughout the years is they play a lot of those kids early and give them that experience that the next year when they have to step in and become starters they've got a little playing time fourth down Welsh Penalty markers all over this one. It's intercepted. But penalty markers are down. John Shaw made the interception. It looks like Western Michigan is going to get another chance at it. Maybe an interference call coming against Michigan with six seconds left on the clock. Maybe one more play. Welsh is here's the call. Pass interference on the defense. The penalty will bring the ball to the two yard line. Automatic first stop. Welsh has set school records for attempts and completions. 36 completions, 58 attempts here this afternoon. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank our spotter, John Elliott, our statistician, Jeff Nelson, our stage manager, Tom Riddle, here in Michigan. And the Wolverines had to get a whole new unit on the field. Timeout. Take a timeout. It was like a fire drill out there. <laughs> I think fire drills are much more coordinated. Yeah, well, you're probably right. Probably right about that. Well, look at Lloyd Carr. He is. He wasn't too happy with the penalties of the first half, and I don't think he's too happy with uh, that disorganization by his Wolverines. Well, the players have gotten back to it. Uh, Randy, I would imagine next week. Uh, is it really back to normal for them? Well, I, I think it's another step, a large step. And every time you can go back to do something, I think everybody's going to have to get back to where they were in, in terms of a, a normalcy on their own pace. But I think you go through the, the week again. There's no questions whether you play. You start becoming more familiar. You start playing your own, your own conference games. Your Michigan and Illinois play each other. So there's more and more familiarity with everything you do mm -hmm. week after week. And I think there were a lot of questions. Even the players, I'm sure, themselves had questions. How am I going to respond? How is it going to be when we get out there? And the focus is still maybe some things on things that happen around the game and not the game itself. 
and every week that will be eliminated you know, more and more, never forgetting the importance or the focus of what the, the real situation is. I think what was impressive was how the crowd reacted. They got into the stadium early. They were here for the moment of silence prior to the game. You look at the school records we mentioned a moment ago, set by Jeff Welsh. Western trying to punch it in in the final seconds. Welsh over the middle, broken up. A Ferry Ogan, the intended receiver, the all Mac tight end. Nice play, John Spitek. He appeared to get a piece of it. Four seconds remaining. Well, you go back to that point we were talking about, and I don't think it will ever become as important issue as what's going on, of course. But you do get into that routine, and you do give the country what President Bush wants, and that's a chance to get back into a more normal routine. Welsh finally decides to take it himself. Touchdown. As time expires. Well, the touchdown on the last play of the game, there will be the extra point attempt because anytime you score the touchdown, you're always given the chance to kick the extra point as opposed to in overtime where it's the score that wins the game for you. Here, you'll have the obligatory extra point attempt. All right. Jeff Welsh, long afternoon. What was he sacked? Almost 10 times. I believe eight times to be exact. Hung in there pretty well. Set some school records here at Michigan today. Benchinger for the point after. And he's got it right through the uprights. Good hold by Dotson. And this game has come to a close. The final score from Michigan Stadium. Lloyd Carr and the Michigan Wolverines. 38. The Western Michigan Broncos 21 here this afternoon. Star Spangled Afternoon here at Michigan Stadium. A stirring pregame, a marvelous halftime, some great big plays on the football field. The crowd got back into what America, one of the things America does best, and that is leisure time. We won't forget the victims or what happened September 12th, but once in a while you need a break from the real world. For Randy Wright, Jim Barber, Wayne Larrabee, so long. Today's program is brought to you by your Chrysler and Jeep Superstores. With room for five adults and fold and tumble seats. Make room for the Chrysler PT Cruiser. Buddy, here buddy. <laughs> buddy, oh no. Now available starting at 16.5 at your Chrysler Jeep Superstore. Looking for a part-time job?